Everyone, I'm Vasily Varlamos. The fringe of a storm passing to the south of us may impact the valley later on today, kicking off an unsettled pattern that'll stick around through next week. I'll give you a look at that front coming up. Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, an investigation underway at a Utah airport this morning after a man is killed in a jet engine. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Carter and this morning lawmakers set to tackle the crisis at the border. What President Biden says needs to happen if issues are to be addressed. CBS 2 News this morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for starting your day off with us. You're taking a live look at a bright Indian Creek Plaza over in Caldwell this morning. It's Wednesday, January 3rd, 2023. We'll get to your weather with Vasily in just a bit, but first, new this morning. Israel says it's ready for whatever comes next after an explosion in Beirut killed Hamas official Salah al -Arui. There's concern that Lebanon's Hezbollah could respond, but Israel's top military spokesman says focus remains on Hamas and, in particular, fighting in Gaza. This after Israel rejected a proposal for a hostage deal that Hamas sent Sunday morning through Qatari and Egyptian mediators, as was reported by Axios. Arori is the most senior Hamas figure killed since the war in Gaza began. Stay tuned, we'll have more on that war in the Middle East coming up in just a bit. Well, South Korea's opposition leader still in the ICU after he was stabbed in the neck. Officials saying this morning that Lee J. Myung's two-hour surgery was successful and that he's still recovering in a hospital. The opposition leader was stabbed in the neck just yesterday after an attacker approached him while asking for his autograph. Now, the suspect was arrested immediately after that attack. Lee was a candidate for president in South Korea in their 2022 presidential election. He lost the race by just 0.7 percentage points. Rescue workers in Japan are still searching for survivors after a powerful earthquake struck the western part of the country. So far, at least 62 people are confirmed dead after Monday's initial 7.6 magnitude quake. There have been dozens of aftershocks, including a 4.9 magnitude aftershock early yesterday morning. Experts say the initial 72 hours of rescue work is important because the chances of survival go down greatly after just three days. Well, Utah police are investigating the death of a man who crawled into a plane engine at the Salt Lake City International Airport. Airport officials saying that man ran onto the secure ramp area at their airport and crawled into a Delta Airlines jet engine that wasn't running. Emergency responders pronouncing him dead at the scene. Police say the man was from Utah and had a boarding pass for a flight to Denver. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board are also investigating. We now know the name of a woman who was killed in a crash New Year's morning. 78-year-old Arlene Parrish of Eagle. A crash at the intersection of North Canada and West Chinden Boulevard around 1.15 a.m. Monday morning killing her. No one else in her car at the time of that crash. The woman driving the other car survived. Idaho police still gathering the details. A new voting law now in effect here in Idaho as we approach the presidential election. Student identification cards can no longer count as a form of ID to vote. They have not been able to be used for registering to vote since July. Those fighting the laws say they also make it harder for people without a current address on their driver's license to register and vote. This includes people in care facilities, people who no longer drive, a lot of our senior citizens, anyone who has moved and people with disabilities. Um, I don't think that was uh, intended. Babe Vote and the League of Women Voters challenging the laws to the Idaho Supreme Court. They're still awaiting the ruling. Both laws in effect until otherwise ruled on and we will keep you updated. The first votes in the presidential election are just two weeks away as Iowans kick off the 2024 with their caucuses and a national shift in support among several groups of voters. It's causing serious concern at the White House. Hispanic voters, a critical part of Democrats base, are picking a different path, according to recent polls. Biden dominated in that demographic 65 to 32 percent last election, but now trails Trump by five percentage points and dropping support in young and black voters as well. We're proud to see that these great numbers are led by surging support from Hispanic Americans, African Americans, and young people. How about that? Biden beat him by more than 7 million votes last time, and we just have millions of young new voters who've joined the rolls, and they can't stand Donald Trump. 
Biden will have to hope that voters who currently support a third party candidate will in the end switch back to him. Though the president's low approval rating could also threaten Democrats control of the Senate. Former President Donald Trump plans to be at a town hall event instead of the next GOP primary debate. The Fox News town hall is set for next week, January 10th. It's the same day and time as CNN is hosting the Republican primary debate in Iowa. CNN officials say only Trump, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley qualify for this next debate. So far, Trump has skipped every party debate. He has a big lead in the polls over his fellow GOP presidential candidates. It comes as Trump and his allies continue to face legal troubles. The former president is appealing a ruling that would keep him off of Maine's 2024 primary ballot over his role in the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. The decision from Maine's Secretary of State citing a section of the 14th Amendment, which says officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding office. Trump's appeal will now go to Maine's Superior Court. He's also expected to appeal a similar ruling by the Colorado Supreme Court. Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows wants a federal appeals court to reconsider his bid to move the criminal case against him. A federal appeals court ruled last month that Meadows could not have the Georgia election interference case against him moved to federal court. He's accused of trying to overturn the 2020 elections to keep Donald Trump in office. He has pleaded not guilty. If Meadows is able to move his case to federal court, he could potentially argue federal immunity to get the charges dropped. Well, immigration issues continuing to drive a wedge between Congress and the White House. Authorities at the U.S.-Mexico border encountering a record number of migrants for the month of December. President Biden outside the White House last night telling reporters that the federal government needs more money to address the southern border crisis. Biden's comments, they come ahead of House Speaker Mike Johnson's visit to the U.S.-Mexico border today. And as Senate negotiations continue, lawmakers trying to secure an agreement on the border package tied to additional funding for both Ukraine and Israel. Well, several crossings at the southern border were sh that were shut down due to record migrant crossings will reopen as of this week. That's according to senior administration officials. Starting tomorrow, authorities will resume operations at the Lukeville, Arizona border crossing, as well as the Nogales, Arizona, the Eagle Pass International Bridge. The one in Texas will also reopen, along with a pedestrian crossing at the San Ysidro port. That's port of entry in California. Mexican and U.S. officials expected to meet in Washington later on this month to continue working together to aggress, address migration. And several Chicago suburbs taking action to stop those unannounced migrant buses from Texas. At least six communities want to pass rules requiring bus operators to get approval before unloading tens of thousands of people. Now, last night, four communities passed policies to restrict buses from stopping in their towns. Chicago's mayor saying Congress needs to create a comprehensive immigration reform policy. Last month, the Chicago City Council approved tougher penalties for bus companies dropping off migrants without notice. More than 90 citations were issued. Two buses were impounded for those violations. Idaho Fish and Game will stock roughly 4,000 rainbow trout this month across several different ponds. That includes over 2,600 rainbow trout across Wilson Creek and Wilson Springs in southwest Idaho, 540 in Marsing Pond, and 900 trout in Filer Kids Pond and Filer Pond. And if you're looking to head up to the mountains, Brundage Mountain Resort announcing the grand opening of the new Centennial Express High Speed Quad. The new chairlift replaces a 32-year-old one installed in 1990 and cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to 6 minutes. A celebration is set for this Friday at the base of the new lift. Those lining up to be among the first to ride the Centennial Express may have free coffee and donuts. It's expected to open around 10 a.m. And some more great news for the skis for skiers out there. We are going to see some more snow in the mountains this weekend. More on that in a bit. But first, let's take a live look at Bocas Basin this morning. We still got some inversion hang out, hanging around right now. And air stagnation advisory will remain in effect through 11 or f through 8 o'clock this morning. And we're going to see some cloudy skies throughout the day today. We may also see some snow flurries as the fringe of a front passing to the south of us may impact our region today. Now, wind speeds will start to pick up this afternoon. We'll see a top wind speed of 7 miles an hour around 2 and 3 p.m. 
That in terms of temperatures, we'll jump above freezing at around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 39 degrees in Boise, expected to arrive at both 2 and 3 p.m. Now we may see some light snow, snow flurries later on today. This is going to kick off an unsettled pattern that'll stick around through this weekend. We'll likely see another storm late on Friday. That'll bring us some snow showers here in the valley, and we could see some cooling this weekend too. High temperatures may drop right around freezing on both Sunday and Monday. Now let's take a look at radar right now. Most of that snow staying over in eastern Oregon this morning. We may see some of that snow move into the lower valley later on in the morning, but in general that snow is going to be light. We're looking at no accumulation around the valley today. Now as we head into Friday, we are going to see about three inches of snow over in McCall, and they'll see about an inch of snow from the fringe of this front over in Twin Falls, likely moving in later on today. Now here's a look at your ski report. These are the base depths at these mountains, 31 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches over at Brundage, and 17 inches the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 39 degrees in Boise, 38 going to be the high over in Caldwell, and 40 looking like the high over in Ontario and over in Emmett. 37 going to be the high over in Nampa and 38 also looking like the high in Mountain Home. Then moving up to the mountains, 37 in Idaho City, 36 going to be the high in Sun Valley and 32 going to be the high in McCall. Temperatures will jump back up into the 40s on both Thursday and Friday before we start to cool down as we head through the weekend. We'll see a high of 38 degrees on Saturday and we'll drop below average on Sunday. We'll likely stay below average on both Monday and Tuesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasili. Well, expect a change to Floating Feather Road west of Highway 16. Instead of segmented, it'll now be continuous on both sides of Pollard Lane. The north stretch of the road is now called Broken Arrow Street. Also, those heading east on Floating Feather will now only be able to turn south onto the highway. Signs are up to help you figure this change out. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, fears of an expanded war in the Middle East. The impact after a Hamas leader is assassinated. Plus, a New Year's celebration up in the cosmos. A look at this solar flare captured on New Year's Eve. Ooh. And hey, it's time for our question of the day. Let's first take a look at yesterday's question. According to one poll, younger Americans more likely to say they plan on doing this in 2024 compared to older Americans. The answer is learning a new skill. Love that. All right, now for today's question, about 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. All right, what is it? Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 514. Welcome back. Israel's war on Hamas is starting to reach beyond its borders. A U.S. official says Israel is behind the assassination of Hamas deputy leader Salah al aruri in Lebanon yesterday. Now his death has extremists in that country calling for revenge. It shows Hamas that the Israelis will target Hamas leaders wherever they are, not just in Gaza, but across the region and indeed across the world. That could spread the conflict north of Israel, just as the situation is heating up to the south. Iran is stationing a naval vessel in the Red Sea after the U.S. sank three Houthi boats there, and it's threatening the vital trade route. And analysts worry if the conflict becomes regional, it could send shipping and oil prices soaring. If oil tankers cannot get through the Red Sea, they might have to take longer, more expensive journeys. Meantime, the U.S. is confident Hamas used Gaza's largest hospital as a command center in its war with Israel. That's according to a report from the Associated Press, which cited a declassified intelligence assessment. The assessment says the U.S. has independently corroborated that Hamas used the Al-Shifa hospital complex to house command centers. The U.S. also believes Hamas members evacuated the hospital days before Israel raided the complex in November. Senator Bernie Sanders says Congress should not send a $10 billion aid package to Israel. Sanders has been a critic of the Israeli Prime Minister's retaliation against Hamas. The lawmaker says Israel has used U.S. defense weapons for a big part of the war, leaving tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians hurt and 85 percent of the Gaza population forced to leave their homes. Last month, Sanders was the only member of the Democratic caucus to vote against advancing a $110 billion emergency foreign aid package, including money for Israel. Well, hey, take a look at this. 2023 ended with an incredible light show from space. NASA's Solar Obser Dynamics Observatory captured these spectacular images of a strong solar flare erupting from the sun. Yeah, it happened back on Sunday afternoon. The close-up image of the sun showing a mix of orange, brown, yellow, and black colors. 
and then a bright white flash appearing on the left side of the photo. You can see it right there. That's the solar flare. Now, solar flares are a powerful burst, burst of energy. Flares in solar eruptions, while beautiful, they can impact radio communications, electric power grids, navigation signals, even posing a risk to spacecrafts and astronauts. And also take a look at this. NASA sharing this image on Twitter from the Juno spacecraft of one of Jupiter's many moons. It's the most volcanically active body in our solar system, if you didn't know that. And the last time NASA was able to examine this moon up close was all the way back in 2001. That was when the Galileo spacecraft came within about 110 miles of Io's south pole. Now this time, the spacecraft was roughly 930 miles away. Researchers hoping it'll provide more insight into Io's volcanic nature. They'll get another up-close look when Juno flies back again come February. What a great look. And also, too, yeah. those solar flare That's images. Amazing. How beautiful is that? Yeah. yeah. No, it's a cool thing to see. Sometimes mm -hmm. the cosmos, they can really surprise yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but back here on Earth, we are waking up to some cloudy skies around the Treasure Valley this morning. We may see some unexpected snow flurries here in the Treasure Valley as the fringe of a front currently passing to the south of us right now is expected to impact our region later on today. This will just be some light snow flurries. We're not looking at any snow accumulation here in the Treasure Valley today, but a series of storms are expected to arrive this weekend, and we could see some snow showers here in the valley on Saturday. Now let's take a look at Futurecast. This front is expected to bring significant precipitation to the Owyhees. However, here in the Treasure Valley, we're likely just going to see a few snow flurries around the region in the late afternoon and early evening hours of today. And then those those snow showers should move over to the Magic Valley where they're expecting about an inch and a half of snow through Thursday. But as for Thursday, we are looking at partly cloudy skies here in the valley. And then the first of multiple fronts are expected to arrive on Friday morning, bringing us a wintry mix of rain and snow on Friday. High temperatures should should jump back up into the low 40s on both Thursday and Friday before we drop back down into the 30s on Saturday. Now we'll see that rain snow mixture on Friday, followed by some snow showers on Saturday, and we should see some drier conditions on both Sunday and Monday as high temperatures drop down into the mid 30s on Sunday and all the way down right around freezing on Monday. Now high temperatures should jump back up into the upper 30s on Tuesday, but we'll likely see the return of precipitation on Tuesday with a winter mix of rain and snow moving into the region. Then meanwhile, over in the mountains, we'll see mostly cloudy skies today, followed by partly cloudy cloudy skies tomorrow. They should see some dry conditions on both of these days with high temperatures right around freezing and they'll drop below freezing on Friday as those snow showers begin and they'll get some much needed snow through Tuesday over in the mountains. High temperatures will be in the right around freezing on Friday before dropping down to the mid 20s on both Saturday and Sunday. They'll drop all the way down to 22 degrees on Monday and take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly four degrees. Those high temperatures should jump back up into the upper 20s on Tuesday and again they'll see those snow showers through Tuesday over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, Americans racking up a record number in credit card debt. The milestone just surpassed. And is bird flu back? The recent discovery up in Northern California. is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 522 on your Wednesday morning. Welcome back. For the first time, the U.S. debt has hit $34 trillion, according to the U.S. Treasury. Looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, it comes as Congress is set to return next week to resume its political fight over federal spending, with funding set to run out in the next few weeks. Supporters of President Biden blame the uptick on tax cuts by previous Republican administrators and point to his plans to reduce the deficit. Credit card debt now exploding and Americans are feeling the pain. According to a new survey by LendingTree, just half of America's credit card customers feel they can pay off their December balance in full, an all-time low in terms of customer confidence. In November, 58% felt the same. The national credit card balance stands out $1 trillion, and the average interest rate has reached 21%, the highest point recorded by the Fed in three decades. Goldman Sachs says it's possible inflation could dip below 2% sometime this year. The bank bases that assessment on what it says is a reasonable downward scenario for consumer goods. Meantime, the New York Fed has found sim something similar. Its measure of underlying inflation ticked down to 2.3% in November from a revised 2.4%. This is the Federal Reserve weighs a series of rate cuts, citing what it says is the likelihood of hitting its 2% base rate. Well, an Al Blake... A 
outbreak rather of avian flu hitting Northern California, and it may be bad news for chicken and egg prices at local grocery stores. Already an estimated some 3 million birds have now been euthanized. Some neighbors say they're already seeing an impact on their shelves. There's going to be an effect on the market. We're going to see perhaps eggs not available in the market. We may see the price of eggs increase. I was shopping yesterday at Lucky's here in Petaluma and they had no eggs. None. Not an egg on the shelf. People own backyard chickens and they can get wiped out even if they only have five chickens. So they've got to be sure when they go into their backyards every morning, they have clean clothes, clean shoes, clean everything. But it's not just our neighbors. Here in Idaho, there were 200 bird flu cases reported in Lataw County just last month. And hey, you may want to check your refrigerator, your freezer. Nearly 3,000 pounds of Valley Meats brand raw ground beef product. They're being recalled over concerns there could be contamination with potentially deadly bacteria, E. coli to be specific. The U.S. Department of Agriculture saying third-party lab tests of the meat. They came back positive, though no one has reported any adverse reactions so far. The products were sent to distributors in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, and Michigan for further distribution in restaurants and other facilities. Well, hey, many Americans now canceling some of their streaming services. Data showing about a quarter of subscribers canceled at least three major services, streaming services over the past two years. National correspondent Janae Bowens explains the trend. How many streaming services do I have? How many fingers do we have? Seriously, I, we are on Peacock, Hulu, Amazon, Apple TV. Rashonda Pratt is a wife and mom of three who's trying to cut down on streaming services. $15 here, $25 here. But Rashonda is not the only one cutting back. Data from Antenna, a subscription analytics company, estimates an increase in monthly churn, meaning subscription cancellations or lapses. In November 2022, the monthly churn rate was at 5.1%. In November 2023, that number rose to 6.3%. We actually see this cohort of consumers that we've deemed serial churners. Brendan Brady, the media and entertainment lead for Antenna, says the churn rate is complex because many people who leave an app come back. Consumers are no longer forced into loyalty. In the cable world, right, you can't not pay for VH1 in one month but have access to MTV, right? You, that's just not something that was on the table. You sort of had all or, or nothing. But in a streaming world, you can have Netflix one month, Apple TV Plus the next month, and then add Max and then add Peacock on top of that. Rashonda says streaming is convenient, but she's pushing her family members to choose their favorites so they aren't subscribed to too many services. The people that we're buying the streaming product from now have to give us something that's worthy of us streaming. We can expect to see a lot more bundle deals and promotions from streaming services looking to keep and get customers. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. Coming up on CBS 2 News, a death at Salt Lake International Airport. We hear from neighbors and experts who try to understand exactly how it happened. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is for you. About 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. CBS 2 News this morning. It's 5.30 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Delta Airlines officials saying they're cooperating with investigators after a man died inside of one of their aircraft engines. 30-year-old Kyler Effinger has been identified as that victim. Ariel Harrison from our Sinclair sister station there. She spoke with passengers and a former airplane mechanic about what happened and what investigators are now discovering. Surprised that somebody made it that far. Seems like especially surprising to get on the air side of an airport on your own. Passengers flying into Salt Lake International shocked by the news. A man died after crawling into an airplane engine here last night. Delta says the plane was an Airbus A22-100. Big round, what looks almost like a black hole from here. That's, that's an engine. Mark Light spent more than 15 years as a licensed airplane mechanic. Looking at a photo of a similar A-22, he points out how the engines hang close to the ground. Where it'd be very easy for someone to crawl in there and 
and you know access that if they were just walking away unrestricted. Just like travelers we spoke with, he too was surprised to hear someone gained access to the tarmac and de-icing pad the plane was on. All of the people that are out there, the baggage handlers, the, the ground crew, are fairly well trained on what, what they can do, where they can be, where they can't be kind of thing. So it's, yes, it's a very regulated, restricted area for even the, even the workers. Police report that an alarm triggered when the man entered the tarmac. Light says had that not happened to alert authorities, it wouldn't have been long before the plane engines turned on with him inside. The fans spool up, I don't want to say slowly, but there would have been a moment in time when that engine started to spin over if, if he would have been aware of that, but he probably would have been able to get out of there. A man is now in custody after police say he stole an airplane and traveled over 100 miles to California with it over the weekend. Police say they were told the suspect took off with the airplane from the North Las Vegas airport back on Saturday. Investigators say that a man landed on a roadway outside a California airport where the local sheriff's office tried to speak with him. The man then tried to run away and is now under arrest. Japanese officials are investigating the fatal plane collision on a runway at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. The accident happened yesterday evening when a Japanese Coast Guard aircraft collided with a passenger plane. The passenger plane was carrying 379 people. All of them were able to get off safely before the plane burst into flames. Five crew members aboard the Coast Guard plane were killed. The pilot was the only survivor. Well, authorities say they're not finding evidence of domestic terrorism in the deadly car crash outside of New Year's concert in Rochester, New York. We told it about you, you about it yesterday. Police say Michael Avery was driving a rented vehicle full of gas cans when he sped up towards pedestrians who were just leaving a concert at the Kodak Center. It caused a collision, causing an explosion and a large blaze that took crews more than an hour to extinguish. Avery died from his injuries, while nine other pedestrians were hurt, including one person with life-altering injuries. Two people were killed. Meantime, police identifying those two victims killed in that fiery New Year's Day crash, Justina Hughes and Joshua Orr, both ones or loved ones of both victims killed in the crash, sharing statements saying in part, quote, we take peace in knowing that Justina and her very best friend Josh spent their last moments together, enjoying their passion and friendship. A new voting law now in effect here in Idaho as we approach the presidential election. Student identification cards are no longer counting as a form of ID to vote. They have not been able to be used for registering to vote since July. This is a nationwide effort to make it harder for young people and students to vote. She says the number of 18 and 19 year olds registering to vote between 2018 to 2022 spiking 66% in Idaho and that it's a trend across the country being met with new laws. Babe Vote and the League of Women Voters challenging both of these laws to Idaho Supreme Court. They're still awaiting the ruling. Both laws in effect until otherwise ruled on. We will be sure to keep you updated. The first votes in the presidential election are just two weeks away now as Iowans kick off the 2024 with their caucuses. And a national shift in support among several groups of voters is now causing some serious concern at the White House. Hispanic voters, a critical part of Democrats' base, are picking a different path according to recent polls. Biden dominated in that demographic 65 to 32 percent last election, but now trails Trump by five percentage points and dropping support in young and black voters as well. We're proud to see that these great numbers are led by surging support from Hispanic Americans, African Americans, and young people. How about that? Biden beat him by more than 7 million votes last time, and we just have millions of young new voters who've joined the rolls, and they can't stand Donald Trump. Biden will have to hope that voters who currently support a third-party candidate will, in the end, switch back to him. Though the president's low approval rating could also threaten Democrats' control of the Senate. And former President Donald Trump plans to be at a town hall event instead of the next GOP primary debate. The Fox News town hall is set for next week on January 10th. It's the same day and same time that CNN is hosting the Republican primary debate in Iowa. CNN officials say only Trump, Ron DeSantis, and Nikki Haley qualify for this next debate. So far, Trump has skipped every party debate. He has a big lead in the polls over his fellow GOP presidential candidates. 
It comes as Trump and his allies continue to face legal troubles. The former president is appealing a ruling that would keep him off of Maine's 2024 primary ballot over his role in the January 6th Capitol riots. The decision from Maine's Secretary of State citing a section of the 14th Amendment, which says officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding office. Trump's appeal will now go to Maine's Superior Court. He's also expected to appeal a similar ruling by the Colorado Supreme Court. Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows wants a federal appeals court to reconsider his bid to move the criminal case against him. A federal appeals court ruled last month that Meadows could not have the Georgia election interference case against him moved to federal court. He is accused of trying to overturn the 2020 elections to keep Donald Trump in office. He has pleaded not guilty. Now, if Meadows is able to move his case to federal court, he could potentially argue federal immunity to get those charges dropped. Well, immigration issues continuing to drive a wedge between Congress and the White House. Authorities at the U.S.-Mexico border encountering a record number of migrants for the month of December. President Biden outside the White House last night telling reporters that the federal government needs more money to address the southern border crisis. Biden's comments come ahead of House Speaker Mike Johnson's visit to the U.S.-Mexico border today. And as Senate negotiations continue, lawmakers trying to secure an agreement on a border package tied to additional funding for both Ukraine and Israel. Well, several crossings at the southern border that were shut down as officials handled that surge of migrants are set to reopen this week. That's according to senior administration officials. It's expected to start tomorrow. Authorities resuming operations at Lukeville's Arizona border crossing, as well as a crossing in Nogales, Arizona. The Eagle Pass International Bridge, the one in Texas, will also reopen, along with a pedestrian crossing at the San Ysidro Port of Entry in California. Mexican and U.S. officials expected to meet in Washington later this month to continue working together to address migration. And several Chicago suburbs taking action to stop those unannounced migrant buses from Texas. At least six communities want to pass rules requiring bus operators to get approval before unloading tens of thousands of people. Last night, four communities passed policies to restrict buses from stopping in their towns. Chicago's mayor saying Congress needs to create a comprehensive immigration reform policy. Last month, Chicago, the city of Chicago, their city council approved tougher penalties for bus companies, dropping off migrants without notice. Now, more than 90 citations were issued and two buses were impounded for those violations. Looking ahead, Idaho Fish and Game will stock roughly 4,000 rainbow trout this month across several different ponds. That includes over 2,600 rainbow trout across Wilson Creek and Wilson Springs in southwest Idaho, 540 in Marsing Pond, and 900 trout in Filer Kids Pond and Filer Pond. Well, we're waking up to some cloudy skies around the Treasure Valley this morning. Let's take a live look at Bogus Basin. We still have some inversion hanging around right now. An air stagnation advisory will remain in effect through 8 a.m. this morning. But we are going to see a, the fringe of a front moving to the south of us move through our region today. That may cause some snow flurries this afternoon. And we may see a few snow flurries this morning, too. Now, wind speeds will start to pick up this afternoon. We'll see a top wind speed of 7 miles an hour at 2 and 3 p.m. Then in terms of temperatures, we'll jump above freezing at around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 39 degrees in Boise expected to arrive at both 2 and 3 p.m. today. So we may see some light snow today and this is kicking off an unsettled pattern and that'll stick around through early next week. We'll see another storm late on Friday and that may cause some snow showers around the Treasure Valley into Saturday morning and we'll likely see high temperatures cooling down right around freezing as we head into Sunday and Monday next week. Let's take a look at radar right now because we are seeing some snow over in eastern Oregon and in portions of the Oregon Idaho border right now. May see some of that snow move into the lower valley this morning, but in general that snow Snow is going to be light. We shouldn't see any accumulation from that snow because most of the snow expected today is going to fall during the warmest portions of the day today. Now we are going to see about an inch of snow in Twin Falls through Thursday afternoon. Then as we head into Friday, we'll likely see a storm arrive in the West Central Mountains, br bringing them about three inches of snow through Friday morning. And speaking of snow, here's a look at your ski report. These are the base depths at these mountains. 31 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches over at Brundage, and 17 inches the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 39 degrees in Boise. 38 going to be the high over in Caldwell and Mountain Home. And 37 looking like the high in Nampa. 40 going to be the high over in Ontario and Emmett. And then moving up to the mountains, 37 going to be the high over in Idaho City. 36 going to be the high over in Sun Valley. And 32 degrees looking like the high in McCall today. 
All right, chilly out there. Thank you, Vasily. It's 540 on your Wednesday. It's time for our question of the day. The question, 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. Ooh, this is an interesting one. I'm going to go with their front door. Maybe they put a wreath ah, out there or something yeah. like that. Maybe, and I know a lot of people that just don't do anything with their front door, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that could work. What do you guys think? I love that. All right. Um, I was actually thinking kind of along the same lines, maybe the front lawn. Oh, I oh like that okay. too. Okay. Are you, yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to go with their car. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, the little, oh, oh the antler. Like oh, that. my favorite are the antlers. Antler. Yeah, that's a great guess, Ashley. Mm -hmm. They always make me smile. All right, <laughs> let's see what folks at home have to say. Anita says their workplace. Oh, Ooh, okay. we do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, we do. Very festive. <laughs> it is very festive. Denise says your kitchen. Okay. Oh, Good I guess like there that too. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that, especially with the pine scents. Sometimes mm -hmm. that is just the yes. best. All right. Tammy, oh, their pets. Yeah. You yep. Know. I definitely oh, need this one. Pups, love yeah. it. Not, oh. not sure how much Lola likes it, but I like it. So <laughs> we all love it. We all love it. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, folks, if you think you know the answer, of course, you can share your guesses. Just head to our Facebook page or Twitter. We'll read more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer. That's at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, finding solace through sound. The new therapy that's helping many while making waves. is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 544. Welcome back. A new study suggests future COVID vaccines should be inhaled rather than injected through shots. Scientists in Boston studied immune responses when a vaccine was given through a device similar to an asthma inhaler. A senior author on the research says the method helps to better build up immune cells in the nose and lungs. That's compared to current shots, which mostly raise antibodies in the blood. The research was published in the journal Nature. It's not the usual way most of us try to improve our health, but an ancient trend in medicine is now growing in modern day popularity. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shows us the art of sound healing. So this is one example of sound healing. What started in areas such as Egypt, China and India now richly growing in the US under the names of sound medicine, meditation, sound baths and sound therapy. For those such as Hannah Chapman, it's time out to meet her own health goals this new year. My goal for the new year in 2024 is to be really present with myself and with the people around me. And what better way to do this, she says, than to let the vibrations of the sound performed by Crystal Bowl practitioner Michelle Luck, she hears, resonate in her body. And I find that the more I'm able to have that sense of presence, the more I'm able to um, you know, know what it is that I need innately. In addition to helping you focus within, however, a recent study by the National Institutes of Health, which looked at the brain waves of those who undergo sound healing techniques, found depending on the frequency emitted from the sound bowls, people experienced reductions in tension, anxiety, depressed mood, and physical pain. They also had a variety of energy levels rise and fall, and different levels of relaxation. So you can sort of just feel why when you listen, can't you? Most sessions at Ohio's Market at B, where Luck has her practice, started about $50 a session. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus reporting. Well, hey, if you're still deciding whether or not to participate in dry January or abstaining from alcohol for the month, CDC scientists listing these benefits that come with no drinking. The biggest is better sleep. Also, lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, and a lower risk of heart and liver disease, as well as cancer. Also, a positive impact to your mood and your mental health. Well, if your New Year's resolution includes exercising more, eating healthier, or improving your mental health, you may be able to find motivation to stick to your goals from a four-legged friend. Now, pets can keep you motivated to move, whether it's taking a dog or a cat on a walk outside, or just playing in the backyard. Staying active can benefit you both. There's a variety of ways that, that pets can play a role in helping people through the holidays, throughout the year. 
Animals can also boost mental health and allow for social connection, not only with your pets, but others you may meet when you're out and about. And if your resolution is to eat healthier, there are many foods that are good for your pets and you. Just research which fruits and vegetables and proteins are safe. All those mm -hmm. cute pups over I there. I know. <laughs> one, number one way to boost mood, I was going to say, with the four-legged friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as far as um, walks this morning, yes. people are heading out yeah. that way. Vasily, what can people expect? Well, they can expect some chilly temperatures. It's quite yeah. cold out there this morning. We're seeing some cloudy skies right now. We'll likely see some cloudy skies throughout the day today. Let's take a look outside across the Gem State right now because we're seeing mostly cloudy conditions all around the region. We aren't seeing that inversion that we've seen over the past couple of days over in the Long Valley this morning. Here in the Treasure Valley right now, we are seeing just some cloud cover and we are going to see a, the this band of precipitation move through our region today. This may cause some snow flurries around the Treasure Valley. Most of the precipitation is going to be down over in the Owyhees. And this is all thanks to a storm that's currently passing to the south of us right now. But we are going to see a change in the pattern as multiple Pacific storms move into our, our region from the Gulf of Alaska. This is not only going to bring us a wintry mix of rain and snow on Friday and possibly some snow showers on Saturday, but it's also going to cool temperatures down, possibly below freezing on Sunday or Monday this week. Let's take a look at future casts. We may see some snow flurries over in the lower valley later on this morning. But but then as we hit through the afternoon, we'll see that snow over in the Oahis. We may see a few snow flurries in the late afternoon here in the Treasure Valley before that moves over into the Magic Valley as we head into Thursday morning. Now on Thursday, we are going to see some partly cloudy skies around the Treasure Valley. We may see some patchy fog tomorrow morning, but then as we head into the afternoon on Thursday, we should start to see that front move into our region and we'll likely see some showers on Friday morning here in the valley as the first of multiple fronts move into the Treasure Valley. Now those high temperatures are going to be in the low 40s on both Thursday and Friday. We'll see that wintry mix of rain and snow, followed by some snow showers on Saturday. Now those high temperatures on Saturday are going to drop down into the upper 30s, and those low temperatures are going to drop below freezing on both Saturday and Sunday morning, and they should stay below freezing as we head through this week. High temperatures will drop down to 34 degrees on Sunday, and will drop right around freezing on Monday. Then high temperatures should trend upwards as we head into Tuesday. We'll see a high 38 degrees with another rain-snow mixture expected here in the valley. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, they'll see mostly cloudy skies today, followed by partly cloudy skies tomorrow. Conditions should stay dry over in the West Central Mountains through Thursday. Now those high temperatures going to be just above freezing both today and tomorrow before they drop below freezing on Friday and those high temperatures should stay below freezing as we head through next week. Now snow showers will begin on Friday and they should continue through Tuesday. Some much needed snow for the mountains, especially for those snow packs. Temperature is going to drop down to 26 degrees on Saturday and dropping down to 24 degrees on Sunday. They'll likely drop all the way down to 22 degrees on Monday and take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning going to be a chilly four degrees. Now we'll continue to see some snow showers into Tuesday and temperatures should start trending upwards as we head into Tuesday over in the mountains too. They'll see a high of 27 degrees on Tuesday and those low temperatures should jump back up into the low teens on Tuesday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News, a busy weekend for the roads and the skies. The new numbers that show just how busy the holiday weekend was. is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 5.53. Welcome back. It was a busy holiday weekend at U.S. airports. According to the Transportation Security Administration, more than 2.6 million people went through TSA security checkpoints nationwide on the Friday before New Year's Eve. That number was 2.5 million on Saturday and 2.1 million on Sunday. TSA Administrator David Pikoski notes the agency is expecting to screen a high number of passengers this week as well as people return home from their holiday travels. Demand for gasoline in the U.S. plummeted by double digits in the last week. According to gas price forecaster Patrick DeHaan's Gas Buddy data, U.S. gasoline demand fell 12 percent last week during the holidays. Last year, during the same week, the U.S. saw demand fall 13.7 percent. After rising last week, the nation's average price of gas fell nearly two cents from a week ago to $3.06 per gallon on Monday. And if you're looking to fill up this morning, here's a look at our state's average. Expect to pay around $3.17 a gallon across Idaho this morning.
morning. It's a bit above the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up is going to be Costco. It's under the $3 a gallon mark there this morning. But if you don't have a membership, you can fill up for $2.99 a gallon at the Flying J on South Federal Way in Boise. If you haven't been able to attend the Winter Wonderland in Caldwell, this is your last week to see the lights. Check them out, grab some food, drinks, and ice skate at Indian Creek Plaza. The holiday lights are on display until Monday, January 8th. The best parking is along the railroad from 5th Avenue to 12th Avenue. And if you're looking to head up to the mountains, Brundage Mountain Resort announcing the grand opening of the new Centennial Express High Speed Quad. The new chairlift replaces a 32-year-old one installed in 1990 and cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to 6 minutes. A celebration set for this Friday at the base of the new lift. Those lining up to be among the first to ride the Centennial Express may have free coffee and donuts. It's expected to open around 10 a.m. And looking ahead, the City of Star is still looking for bands and musicians to fill its summer concert series. They're at the Star River House the second and fourth Fridays in June, July, and August. Between four and 500 people attend the events, so if you're interested, call City Offices for more information. Well, here's something you can look forward to this year. Hip-hop legend Snoop Dogg set to join NBC Universal's coverage of the 2024 Summer Paris Olympics. Now, Snoop will cover primetime programming on the broadcasting network and streaming hub Peacock in 2021. Snoop joined comedian Kevin Hart for commentary on the Tokyo Olympics. You may remember that. Network executives tapping the legend after his 2021 Olympic commentary had tens of millions of views. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, looking ahead to the presidential election, how polling numbers seem to be stacking up as Biden prepares to face off against this year's candidates. Plus, fears of an expanded war in the Middle East, the impact after Hamas leader is assassinated. You are watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. And we'll be back at the top of the hours with your top stories and your weather. Stay with us. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. everyone, I'm Vasily Varlamos. The fringe of a storm passing to the south of us may impact the valley later today, kicking off an unsettled pattern that will last through next week. I'll give you a look at that front coming up. Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, an investigation underway at a Utah airport this morning after a man is killed in a jet engine. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Carter and this morning lawmakers set to tackle the crisis at the border. What President Biden says needs to happen if issues are to be addressed. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for starting your day off with us. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza over in Caldwell this morning. It's Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024. We'll get to your weather with Vasily in just a bit, but first, new this morning. Israel says it's ready for whatever comes next after an explosion in Beirut killed Hamas official Salah al -Rui. There's concern that Lebanon's Hezbollah could respond, but Israel's top military spokesman says focus remains on Hamas and, in particular, fighting in Gaza. This after Israel rejected a proposal for a hostage deal that Hamas sent Sunday through Qatari and Egyptian mediators, as was reported by Axios. Arori is the most senior Hamas figure killed since the war began in Gaza. Stay tuned, we will have more on the war in the Middle East coming up in just a bit. Well, South Korea's opposition leader still in the ICU after he was stabbed in the neck. Officials saying this morning that Lee Jae Young's two-hour surgery, it was successful and that he's still recovering in the hospital. The opposition leader was stabbed in the neck back on Tuesday after an attacker approached him while asking for his autograph. The suspect was arrested immediately after that attack. Lee was a candidate for president in South Korea's 2022 presidential election. He lost the race by just 0.7 percentage points. 
Rescue workers in Japan are still searching for survivors after a powerful earthquake struck the western part of the country. So far, at least 62 people are confirmed dead after the Monday's initial 7.6 magnitude quake. There have been dozens of aftershocks, including a 4.9 magnitude aftershock early yesterday morning. Experts say the initial 72 hours of rescue work is important because the chances of survival go down greatly after just three days. Utah police investigating the death of a man who crawled into a plane engine at Salt Lake City's International Airport. Airport officials saying the man ran onto the secure ramp area at the airport and crawled into a Delta Airlines jet engine that was not running. Emergency responders pronouncing him dead at the scene. Police saying the man was from Utah and had a boarding pass for a flight to Denver. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board are also investigating. We now know the name of a woman who was killed in a crash New Year's morning. 78-year-old Arlene Parrish of Eagle. A crash at the intersection of North Canada and West Chinden Boulevard around 1.15 a.m. Monday morning, killing her. No one else was in her car at the time of the crash. The woman driving the other car survived. Idaho police are still gathering the details. A new voting law now in effect here in Idaho as we approach the presidential election. Student identification cards can no longer count as a form of ID to vote. They haven't been able to be used for registering to vote since July. Those fighting the laws say they also make it harder for people without a current address on their driver's license to register and vote. This includes people in care facilities, people who no longer drive, a lot of our senior citizens, anyone who has moved and people with disabilities. Um, I don't think that was uh, intended. Babe Vote and the League of Women Voters challenging the laws to the Idaho Supreme Court. They're still awaiting the ruling. Both laws in effect until otherwise ruled on will keep you updated. The first votes in the presidential election are just two weeks away now as Iowans kick off 2024 with their caucuses. And a national shift in support among several groups of voters is causing some serious concern at the White House. Hispanic voters, a criti critical part of Democrats' base, now picking a different path according to recent polls. Biden dominated in that demographic 65 to 32 percent last election, but now trails Trump by five percentage points and dropping support in young and black voters as well. We're proud to see that these great numbers are led by surging support from Hispanic Americans, African Americans, and young people. How about that? Biden beat him by more than 7 million votes last time, and we just have millions of young new voters who've joined the rolls, and they can't stand Donald Trump. Biden will have to hope that voters who currently are supporting a third-party candidate will in the end switch back to him. Though the president's low approval rating could also threaten Democrats' control of the Senate. Former President Donald Trump plans to be at a town hall event instead of the next GOP primary debate. The Fox News town hall is set for next week on January 10th. It's the same day and same time that CNN is hosting the Republican primary debate in Iowa. CNN officials say only Trump, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley qualify for this next debate. So far, Trump has skipped every party debate. He has a big lead in the polls over his fellow GOP presidential candidates. It comes as Trump and his allies continue to face legal troubles. The former president is appealing a ruling that would keep him off of Maine's 2024 primary ballot over his role in the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. The decision from Maine's Secretary of State citing a section of the 14th Amendment, which says officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding office. Trump's appeal will now go to Maine's Superior Court. He's also expected to appeal a similar ruling by the Colorado Supreme Court. Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows wants a federal appeals court to reconsider his bid to move the criminal case against him. A federal appeals court ruled last month that Meadows could not have the Georgia election interference case against him moved to federal court. He is accused of trying to overturn the 2020 election to keep Donald Trump in office. He has pleaded not guilty. If Meadows is able to move his case to federal court, he could potentially argue federal immunity to get the charges dropped. Well, immigration issues continuing to drive a wedge between Congress and the White House. Authorities at the U.S.-Mexico border encountering a record number of migrants for the month of December. President Biden outside the White House last night telling reporters that the federal government needs more money to address the southern border crisis. Give me the money I need to protect the border. 
Biden's comments come ahead of House Speaker Mike Johnson's visit to the U.S.-Mexico border today. And as Senate negotiations continue, lawmakers trying to secure an agreement on a border package tied to additional funding for Ukraine and Israel. And several crossings at the southern border that were shut down due to the record number of migrant crossings set to reopen this week. According to senior administration officials, starting tomorrow, authorities will resume operations at the Lukeville, Arizona border crossing, as well as the Nogales, Arizona, or in Nogales, Arizona, that is. The Eagle Pass International Bridge in Texas will also be reopening, along with a pedestrian crossing at the San Ysidro Port of Entry in California. Mexican and U.S. officials expected to meet in Washington later this month to continue working together to address migration. And several Chicago suburbs taking action to stop those unannounced migrant buses from Texas. At least six communities want to pass rules requiring those bus operators to get approval before unloading tens of thousands of people. Last night, four communities passing policies to restrict those buses from stopping in their towns. Chicago's mayor saying Congress needs to create a comprehensive immigration reform policy. Last month, Chicago City Council approved tougher penalties for bus companies dropping off migrants without that notice. More than 90 citations were issued and two buses were impounded for violations. Looking ahead, Idaho Fish and Game will stock roughly 4,000 rainbow trout this month across several ponds. That includes over 2,600 rainbow trout across Wilson Creek and Wilson Springs in southwest Idaho, 540 in Marsing Pond, and 900 trout in Filer Kids Pond and Filer Pond. And if you are looking to head up to the mountains, Brundage Mountain Resort announcing the grand opening of the new Centennial Express High Speed Quad. The new chairlift replaces a 32-year-old one installed in 1990 and cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to 6 minutes. A celebration is set for this Friday at the base of the new lift. Those lining up to be among the first to ride the Centennial Express may have free coffee and donuts. It's expected to open around 10 a.m. And some more great news for skiers. We're likely going to see some significant snow in the mountains this weekend. But as for today, we are seeing some inversion around the Treasure Valley this morning. Some high clouds hanging around the region, too. We'll likely see some overcast skies all day today. We may see a few snow flurries this afternoon and possibly through the, the early portion of this evening. That's thanks to the fringe of a front moving to the south of us impacting our region today. Now we are going to see a top wind speed of 7 miles an hour around 3 p.m. And then in terms of temperatures, we'll jump above freezing at around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 39 degrees in Boise expected to arrive at 2 and 3 p.m. today. So we'll see some light snow today and that'll be followed up by another storm on Friday that may bring us some snow showers here in the valley on Saturday morning. Now we are going to see an unsettled pattern through this weekend. We'll also see some cooling to those high temperatures drop right around freezing on Monday. And let's take a look at radar right now because we are seeing some light snow falling across eastern Oregon right now. We are seeing some moving over into southwest Idaho right now. We've got some snow flurries right now over in Homedale and over over in Wilder right now, and we are going to see little to no snow accumulation around the Treasure Valley today. But as we head through Friday morning, we are going to see a light dusting of snow here in the valley early on on Friday morning. We'll continue to see a rain snow mixture through Friday afternoon and possibly through Friday evening. Now here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains. 31 inches of Tamarack, 15 inches of Brundage, and 17 inches of the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 39 degrees in Boise, 38 going to be the high over in Caldwell and Mountain. Mountain home and 40 looking like the high over in Emmett and Ontario. Then moving up to the mountains, 32 are going to be the high in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 610 this Wednesday morning, let's check in on the drive with Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Caldwell to Boise. No slowdowns, no crashes. Chinden and State Street eastbound are looking good from Middleton Road into downtown Boise. And we have nothing to slow you down on Northside or Karcher or Garrity. It's looking good for your start of the commute this morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with even more team traffic updates on your way to your destination. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, fears of an expanded war in the Middle East. The impact after a Hamas leader is assassinated. Plus, a New Year's celebration in the cosmos. A look at this solar flare captured on New Year's Eve. Ooh. 
All right, it's time for our question of the day. Let's first take a look back at yesterday's question. According to one poll, younger Americans more likely to say they plan on doing this in 2024 compared to older Americans. The answer is learning a new skill. Love that. All right, now for today's question, about 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. All right, what is it? is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.15 on your Wednesday morning. Welcome back. Israel's war on Hamas is starting to reach beyond its borders. A U.S. official says Israel is behind the assassination of Hamas deputy leader Salah al rui in Lebanon yesterday. Now his death has extremists in that country calling for revenge. It shows Hamas that the Israelis will target Hamas leaders wherever they are, not just in Gaza, but across the region and indeed across the world. That could spread the conflict north of Israel, just as the situation is heating up to the south. Iran is stationing a naval vessel in the Red Sea after the U.S. sank three Houthi boats there, and it's threatening the vital trade route. Analysts worry if the conflict becomes regional, it could send shipping and oil prices soaring. If oil tankers cannot get through the Red Sea, they might have to take longer, more expensive journeys. Senator Bernie Sanders says Congress should not send a $10 billion aid package to Israel. Sanders has been a critic of the Israeli Prime Minister's retaliation against Hamas. The lawmaker says Israel has used U.S. defense weapons for a big part of the war, leaving tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians hurt and 85 percent of the Gaza population forced to leave their homes. Last month, Sanders was the only member of the Democratic caucus to vote against advancing a $110 billion emergency foreign aid package, including money for Israel. Well, hey, take a look at this. 2023 ended with an incredible light show from space. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory capturing these spectacular images of a very strong solar storm from the sun. It happened back on Sunday afternoon. The close up image of the sun showing a mix of orange, yellow, brown and black colors. And then that bright white flash appearing on the left side of the photo. You can see it right there. Solar flares are powerful energy bursts. Flares and solar eruptions, well, beautiful, they can actually impact radio communications, electric power grids, navigation signals, even posing a risk to spacecrafts and astronauts. And take a look at this, NASA sharing this image on Twitter from the Juno spacecraft. It's one of Jupiter's many moons. It's the most volcanically active body in our solar system. And the last time NASA was able to examine that moon up close was back in 2001. That was when the Galileo spacecraft came within 112 miles of its south pole. This time, the spacecraft was roughly 930 miles away. Researchers hoping it'll provide more insight into Io's volcanic nature. They will get another up-close look when Juno flies by again come February. Oh, how cool is that? All right. Yeah, I know some pretty yeah. clear images, yeah. especially that solar flare. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, but we're yeah. not seeing any clear images if you look up at <laughs> no. the sky right now. <laughs> yeah. We are seeing some cloudy skies around the Treasure Valley this morning. Also some chilly temperatures too. Temperatures right now sitting below freezing for much of the Treasure Valley. We do have a low pressure system moving through northern Nevada right now. Now a fringe of that storm may impact us here in the valley later on today with a few snow flurries. However, no snow accumulations is expected here in the valley. But then as we head into Friday, we are going to see a series of Pacific storms moving into our region from the Gulf of Alaska, possibly bringing us a rain snow mixture on Friday and possibly some snow showers on Saturday. This will also cool down temperatures over the weekend. But as for today, we are going to see some snow over in eastern Oregon throughout the morning as we head into the afternoon. That is going to drop down into the Oahees. Well, they'll see some significant snow today. They could see up to eight inches over in the Oahees. Then as we head into the afternoon and early evening, we may see a few snow flurries around the region, mostly over in Mountain Home. Then as we head into the evening on Wednesday, we are going to see those snow flurries move over into the or move over over to the Magic Valley and then on, on Thursday we are going to see some partly cloudy skies around the region and then by Friday we'll see the first of those storms moving in bringing us a wintry mix of rain and snow here in the valley. Now high temperatures on Friday likely going to stay in the low 40s but we'll drop down into the upper 30s on Saturday where we may see some snow showers with those low temperatures dropping below freezing. Those lows should remain below freezing throughout this week and high temperatures may drop right around freezing on Monday. We'll likely see dry conditions on Sunday and Monday followed by a rain snow mixture on Tuesday. Meanwhile moving over to the mountains. They'll see some much needed snow on Friday and those snow showers should continue through Tuesday and next week. High temperatures will drop below freezing on Friday and they'll drop all the way down into the low 20s by Monday. Take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly four degrees over in the mountains. 
Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's get a traffic update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Caldwell to Boise. No slowdowns, no crashes. We are starting to see some extra traffic on Meridian Road northbound as you approach Overland Road on your way up to the freeway. And on Chinden and State Street eastbound from Middleton Road into downtown Boise, that's looking great as well. A little bit of congested traffic on Fairview on Eagle Road between Fairview and Overland, and that's mainly southbound right now. From the Newstalk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your Wednesday morning, be sure to start it off staying up to date with some team traffic updates. You can get those by turning on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Coming up on CBS2 News this morning, Americans racking up a record number in credit card debt. The milestone just surpassed. And is bird flu back? The recent discovery in Northern California. Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 623. Welcome back. For the first time, the U.S. debt has hit $34 trillion, according to the U.S. Treasury. Looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, it comes as Congress is set to return next week to resume its political fight over federal spending, with funding set to run out in the next few weeks. Supporters of President Biden blame the uptick on tax cuts by previous Republican administrations and point to his plans to reduce the deficit. Credit card debt now exploding and Americans are feeling the pain. According to a new survey by LendingTree, just half of America's credit card customers feel they can pay off their December balance in full, an all-time low in terms of customer confidence. In November, 58% felt the same. The national credit card balance stands at $1 trillion, and the average in interest rate has reached 21%, the highest point recorded by the Fed in three decades. Goldman Sachs says it's possible inflation could dip below 2% sometime this year. The bank bases that assessment on what it says is a reasonable downward scenario for consumer goods. Meantime, the New York Fed has found something similar. Its measure of underlying inflation ticked down to 2.3% in November from a revised 2.4%. This is the Federal Reserve weighs a series of rage cuts, citing what it says is the likelihood of hitting its 2% base rate. Well, an outbreak of avian flu hitting Northern California, and it may be bad news for chicken and egg prices at grocery stores. Already, an estimated some 3 million birds have now been euthanized. Some neighbors saying they're already seeing the impact on store shelves. There's going to be an effect on the market. We're going to see perhaps eggs not available in the market. We may see the price of eggs increase. I was shopping yesterday at Lucky's here in Petaluma, and they had no eggs. None. Not an egg on the shelf. People own backyard chickens and they can get wiped out even if they only have five chickens. So they've got to be sure when they go into their backyards every morning, they have clean clothes, clean shoes, clean everything. But it's not just in California. Right here in Idaho, there were 200 bird flu cases reported in Layton County just last month. Many Americans now canceling some of their streaming services. Data showing about a quarter of subscribers canceled at least three major streaming services over the past two years. National correspondent Janae Bowens explains this trend. How many streaming services do I have? How many fingers do we have? Seriously, I, we are on Peacock, Hulu, Amazon, Apple TV. Rashonda Pratt is a wife and mom of three who's trying to cut down on streaming services. $15 here, $25 here. But Rashonda is not the only one cutting back. Data from Antenna, a subscription analytics company, estimates an increase in monthly churn, meaning subscription cancellations or lapses. In November 2022, the monthly churn rate was at 5.1%. In November 2023, that number rose to 6.3%. We actually see this cohort of consumers that we've deemed serial churners. Brendan Brady, the media and entertainment lead for Antenna, says the churn rate is complex because many people who leave an app come back. Consumers are no longer forced into loyalty. In the cable world, right, you can't not pay for VH1 in one month but have access to MTV, right? You, that's just not something that was on the table. You sort of had all or, or nothing. But in a streaming world, 
you can have Netflix one month, Apple TV plus the next month, and then add Max and then add Peacock on top of that. Rashonda says streaming is convenient, but she's pushing her family members to choose their favorites so they aren't subscribed to too many services. The people that we're buying the streaming product from now have to give us something that's worthy of us streaming. We can expect to see a lot more bundle deals and promotions from streaming services looking to keep and get customers. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. Coming up on CBS 2 News, a death at the Salt Lake City International Airport. We hear from neighbors and experts who try to understand exactly how it happened. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is. 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses next. Is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.30 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Delta Airlines officials say they're cooperating with investigators after a man died inside of one of their aircraft engines. 30-year-old Kyler Effinger has been identified as the victim. Ariel Harrison from our Sinclair sister station there. She spoke with passengers and a former plane mechanic about what happened and what investigators are now discovering. It's a surprise that somebody made it that far. Seems like especially surprising to get on the air side of an airport on your own. Passengers flying into Salt Lake International shocked by the news. A man died after crawling into an airplane engine. Delta says the plane was an Airbus A22-100. Big round, what looks almost like a black hole from here. That's, that's an engine. Mark Light spent more than 15 years as a licensed airplane mechanic. Looking at a photo of a similar A-22, he points out how the engines hang close to the ground. Where it'd be very easy for someone to crawl in there and, and you know, access that if they were just walking away unrestricted. Just like travelers we spoke with, he too was surprised to hear someone gained access to the tarmac and de-icing pad the plane was on. All of the people that are out there, the baggage handlers, the, the ground crew, are fairly well trained on what what they can do, where they can be, where they can't be kind of thing. So it's yes, it's a very regulated, restricted area for even the even the workers. Police report that an alarm triggered when the man entered the tarmac. Light says had that not happened to alert authorities, it wouldn't have been long before the plane engines turned on with him inside. The fans spool up. I don't want to say slowly, but there would have been a moment in time when that engine started to spin over if, if he would have been aware of that, but he probably would have been able to get out of there. A man is in custody after police say he stole an airplane and traveled over 100 miles to California with it over the weekend. Police say they were told the suspect took off with the airplane from the North Las Vegas airport back on Saturday. Investigators say a man landed on a roadway outside a California airport where the local sheriff's office tried to speak with him. The man tried to run away. He's now under arrest. Japanese officials are investigating the fatal plane collision on a runway at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. The accident happened yesterday evening when a Japanese Coast Guard aircraft collided with the passenger plane. The passenger plane was carrying 379 people. All of them were able to get off safely before the plane burst into flames. Five crew members aboard the Coast Guard plane were killed. The pilot was the only survivor. Authorities say they're not finding any evidence of domestic terrorism in that deadly car crash outside a New Year's concert in Rochester, New York. Police say Michael Avery was driving a rented vehicle full of cans of gas when he sped towards pedestrians who were just leaving a concert at the Kodak Center, causing the collision that caused an explosion and large blaze that took crews more than an hour to extinguish. Avery died from his injuries while nine other pedestrians were hurt, including one person with life altering injuries. Two people were killed. Meantime, police identifying those two victims killed in that fiery New Year's Day crash. Justina Hutchins and Joshua Orr, loved ones of both victims killed in the crash, sharing statements, saying in part, quote, we take peace in knowing that Justina and her very best friend, Josh, spent their last moments together, enjoying their passion and friendship. Turning to developing news, a new voting law now in effect here in Idaho as we approach the presidential election. Student identification cards no longer count as a form of ID to vote. They have not been able to be used for registering to vote since July. This is a nationwide effort to make it harder for young people and students to vote. 
She says the number of 18 and 19 year olds registering to vote between 2018 to 2022 spiking 66 percent in Idaho. And that's a trend across the country being met with new laws. Babe Vote and the League of Women Voters challenging both of these laws to the Idaho Supreme Court. They're still awaiting that ruling. Both laws in effect until otherwise ruled on. We will be sure to keep you updated. The first votes in the presidential election are just two weeks away now as Iowans kick off 2024 with their caucuses. And a national shift in support among several groups of voters is causing serious concern at the White House. Hispanic voters, a critical part of Democrats' base, are picking a different path according to recent polls. Biden dominated in that demographic 65 to 32 percent last election, but now trails Trump by five percentage points and dropping support in young and black voters as well. We're proud to see that these great numbers are led by surging support from Hispanic Americans, African Americans and young people. How about that? Biden beat him by more than seven million votes last time, and we just have millions of young new voters who've joined the rolls and they can't stand Donald Trump. Biden will have to hope that voters who currently support a third party candidate will in the end switch back to him, though the president's low approval rating could also threaten Democrats control of the Senate. Former President Donald Trump plans to be at a town hall event instead of the next GOP primary debate. The Fox News town hall is set for next week on January 10th. It's the same day and same time as CNN is hosting the Republican primary debate in Iowa. CNN officials say only Trump, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley qualify for this next debate. So far, Trump has skipped every party debate. He has a big lead in the polls over his fellow GOP presidential candidates. Immigration issues continuing to drive a wedge between Congress and the White House. Authorities at the U.S.-Mexico border encountering a record number of migrants in the month of December. President Biden outside the White House last night telling reporters that the federal government needs more money to address the southern border crisis. Biden's comments coming ahead of the House Speaker Mike Johnson's visit to the U.S.-Mexico border later today and as Senate negotiations are continuing. Lawmakers trying to secure an agreement on a border package tied to additional funding for Ukraine and Israel. Well, several crossings at the southern border that were shut down as officials handled that surge of migrants will reopen this week. That's according to senior administration officials. Starting tomorrow, authorities will resume operations at the Lukeville, Arizona border crossing, as well as the Nogales in Nogales, Arizona. The Eagle Pass International Bridge in Texas will also reopen, along with a pedestrian crossing in the San Ysidro Port of Entry in California. Mexican and U.S. officials expected to meet in Washington later this month to continue working together to address migration. And it comes as several Chicago suburbs are taking action to stop unannounced migrant buses from Texas. At least six communities want to pass rules requiring bus operators to get approval before unloading tens of thousands of people. Last night, four communities passing policies to restrict those buses from stopping in their towns. Chicago's mayor saying Congress needs to create a comprehensive immigration reform policy. Last month, the Chicago City Council approved tougher penalties for those bus companies dropping off migrants without notice. More than 90 citations were issued. Two buses were impounded for violations. Back here at home, Idaho Fish and Game will stock roughly 4,000 rainbow trout this month across several ponds. That includes over 2,600 rainbow trout across Wilson Creek and Wilson Springs in southwest Idaho, 540 in Marsing Pond, and 900 trout in Filer Kids Pond and Filer Pond. Well, we're waking up to cloudy skies around the Treasure Valley this morning. Let's take a live look at Bogus Basin. You can see some inversions still hanging around right now. We also got some high clouds over the region, and we are going to see some snow flurries later on today as the fringe of a front moves through our region that is passing to the south of us right now. Now, we are going to see a top wind speed of 7 miles an hour around 3 p.m. Then, in terms of temperatures, we'll jump above freezing at around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 39 degrees in Boise, expected to arrive at 2 and 3 p.m. So, over the next couple of days, we are going to see an 
an unsettled pattern here in the valley. That light snow of the fringe of a front that is passing to the south of us through northern Nevada. Now we are going to see another storm moving in late on Friday. That will likely turn into some snow showers as we head into Saturday morning. And this unsettled pattern is set to stick around through this weekend. We'll also see some cooling too. High temperatures may drop right around freezing as we head into Monday. Now as for this morning, we are seeing some snow showers over in eastern Oregon. It is creeping over the border right now. We are seeing some snow flurries near Wilder and near Homedale this morning. And we are looking at little to no snow accumulation here in the Treasure Valley through Thursday afternoon. Now as we head into Friday morning, we'll see some snow showers here in the valley. We could see up to an inch of snow here in Boise. We'll see about three to four inches of snow over in McCall through Friday morning. Now here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains. 31 inches over at Tamarack, 15 inches over at Brundage, and 17 inches of the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures to date, we'll see a high of 39 degrees in Boise. 38 going to be the high over in Caldwell and Mountain Home. 37 going to be the high over in Nampa. 40 going to be the high over in Emmett and over in Ontario. And then moving up to the mountains, 37 going to be the high over in Idaho City. 36 looking like the high in Sun Valley and 32 degrees going to be the high in McCall today. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 639 this Wednesday morning, let's check in on the morning drive with Debbie McAllister. Good morning. Things are still looking pretty good on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. Nothing to slow you down. There's no crashes or slowdowns. We do have a little bit of extra traffic on Karcher heading over to the freeway. It starts right about Middleton Road. A little bit of extra traffic on Garrity and Northside Boulevard heading up to the freeway. Meridian Road, a little busy northbound as you approach Overland, heading up to the freeway. So just a little bit of traffic heading up to the freeway on all our major thoroughfares. <laughs> From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with some team traffic updates. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. All right, it's 640 on your Wednesday. It's time for our question of the day. The question about 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. I'm going to go with my guests from the first hour and I'm going to say maybe their front door. Maybe they put a wreath mm -hmm. up or something. I don't know. What do you guys think? Exactly. Like that one. I do too. 25% mm -hmm. a little lower. Um, I'm going to stick with your lawn. Yeah, it's yep. another good one too. Yeah, I'm going to stick with your car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Love yeah, those reindeers. Yeah. I want that so bad. Yeah, feeling festive. They always make me happy. All right, Jolene says your mailbox. Ooh, oh. That's a creative one. I like oh. that, Jolene. Yeah, I like that. That's fun. Oh, Karen says your guest bedroom. Oh, Ooh, maybe yes. the forgotten area. Yeah, okay. for sure. You have yeah. some people coming into town. Mm -hmm. yep. Lori says you're outside trees. Ooh, yep. I love when people do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I know. Great. Always the best. I try to keep them up as long as I can, to be honest. <laughs> All right, folks, if you think you know the answer, you can share your guesses on our Facebook page or our Twitter. We'll read more of your guesses and reveal the answer at the end of the show. That's right before CBS This Morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, finding solace through sound. The new therapy that's helping many while making waves. CBS 2 News this morning. It's 644. Welcome back. A new study suggests future COVID vaccines should be inhaled rather than injected through shots. Scientists in Boston studied immune responses when a vaccine was given through a device similar to an asthma inhaler. A senior author on the research says the method helps to better build up immune cells in the nose and lungs. That's compared to current shots, which mostly raise antibodies in the blood. The research was published in the journal Nature. It's not the usual way most of us try to improve our health, but an ancient trend in medicine is growing in modern day popularity. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shows us the art of sound healing. So this is one example of sound healing. What started in areas such as Egypt, China, and India, now richly growing in the U.S. under the names of sound medicine, meditation, sound baths, and sound therapy. For those such as Hannah Chapman, it's time out to meet her own health goals this new year. My goal for the new year in 2024 is to be really present 
with myself and with the people around me. And what better way to do this, she says, than to let the vibrations of the sound performed by Crystal Bowl practitioner Michelle Luck, she hears, resonate in her body. And I find that the more I'm able to have that sense of presence, the more I'm able to um, you know, know what it is that I need innately. In addition to helping you focus within, however, a recent study by the National Institutes of Health, which looked at the brain waves of those who undergo sound healing techniques, found depending on the frequency emitted from the sound bowls, people experienced reductions in tension, anxiety, depressed mood, and physical pain. They also had a variety of energy levels rise and fall, and different levels of relaxation. So you can sort of just feel why when you listen, can't you? Most sessions at Ohio's Market at B, where Luck has her practice, started about $50 a session. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus reporting. Well, if you're still deciding whether or not to participate in dry January or abstaining from alcohol for the month, CDC scientists listing these benefits that come with no drinking. Now, the biggest is better sleep, also lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, and a lower risk of heart and liver disease, as well as cancer. Also, a positive impact to your mood and your mental health. And if your New Year's resolution includes maybe exercising more and eating healthier or improving your mental health, you may be able to find that motivation to stick to your goals from a four-legged friend. Now, pets can keep you motivated to move, whether that's taking your dog or even a cat on a walk outside, we don't judge, or just playing in the backyard. Staying active can benefit you both. There's a variety of ways that, that pets can play a role in helping people through the holidays, throughout the year. Now, animals can boost your mental health and allow for social connection, not only with your pet, but other people you may meet when you're out and about. And if your resolution is to eat healthier, there may be foods which are good for you and your pet. Just make sure to research which fruits, vegetables, and proteins are safe. Those mm -hmm. are some cute pups. Always yeah. a mood boost. I love it. <laughs> Definitely. But if you're wanting to take your dog outside, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, meet people out there this morning. What are we looking at? Definitely going to need a jacket. It's quite yeah. chilly out there right now. Much of the Treasure Valley sitting below freezing. We're also seeing some cloudy skies as this front you see on your screen is passing to the south of us right now through northern Nevada. Now a fringe of that front is expected to pass through the Treasure Valley later on today, possibly bringing us a few snow flurries. However, no snow, snow accumulation is expected. And then as we head into the weekend, we are going to see a series of Pacific storms moving in from the Gulf of Alaska. They'll not only bring us a rain snow mixture on Friday, we could even see some snow showers on Saturday. Now, now, as for today, we're going to see that snow over in eastern Oregon continue, and then that should drop down into the Oahis as we head into the afternoon. As we head into the later hours of the afternoon, we may see a few of those snow flurries, and we'll likely see most of those snow flurries over in Mountain Home. And then as we head into Thursday evening, we'll see that snow move over into Twin Falls, but they're expecting about an inch and a half of snow through Thursday. Now, here in the Treasure Valley, we'll likely see some mostly clear skies in the morning, followed by some cloudy skies as we head into the evening on Thursday, ahead of a front that is expected to bring us a rain-snow mixture throughout the morning on Friday. Friday. Now we'll likely continue to see some periods of rain and snow throughout the day on Friday and then on Saturday. We'll see those high temperatures dropping down to the upper 30s and with those lows dropping below freezing, we do have a good chance of seeing some snow showers here in the valley on Saturday. Now we should see some drier conditions on Sunday and Monday, but take a look at that temperature drop. We'll see those high temperatures right around freezing and those lows are going to be in the upper teens on Monday morning. But then by Tuesday, temperatures should trend upwards. We'll likely see a rain snow mixture on Tuesday with a high of 38 degrees in Boise. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, their high temperature is going to be just above freezing both today and tomorrow before dropping below freezing on Friday and they'll likely stay below freezing throughout the rest of the week. Now they're going to get some much needed snow over the weekend in the mountains. They'll see snow showers from Friday through Tuesday and next week, but take a look at this temperature drop. Those high temperatures are going to drop down all the way to 22 degrees on Monday and those low temperatures are going to be right around four degrees over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's get an update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. We're starting to see some heavier traffic around the Garrity interchange and then heavy traffic coming out of the Meridian Road interchange onto the eastbound lanes of the freeway. And that continues until you're past Cloverdale. Garrity is a little on the busy side heading up to Stam Lane and on Chinden and State Street heading into downtown Boise. Things are looking good as well. No slowdowns. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister.
Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with even more team traffic updates. You can find those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News, a busy weekend in both the roads and in the skies. The new numbers that show just how busy this holiday weekend was. CBS 2 News this morning. Well, it was a busy holiday weekend at U.S. airports. According to the Transportation Security Administration, more than 2.6 million people went through TSA security checkpoints nationwide on the Friday before New Year's Eve. That number was 2.5 million on Saturday and 2.1 million on Sunday. TSA Administrator David Pekoski notes the agency is expecting to screen a high number of passengers this week as well, as people are now returning home from their holiday travel. Demand for gasoline in the U.S. plummeted by double digits in the last week. According to gas price forecaster Patrick DeHaan's Gas Buddy data, U.S. gasoline demand fell 12 percent last week during the holidays. Last year, during the same week, the U.S. saw demand fall 13.7 percent. After rising last week, the nation's average price of gas fell nearly two cents from a week ago to $3.06 per gallon on Monday. If you're looking to fill up this morning, here's a quick look at our state's average. You can expect to pay around $3.17 a gallon across Idaho this morning. It's a bit above the national average. Hey, according to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up is going to be Costco. It's under the $3 a gallon mark there this morning. But if you don't have a membership, you can also fill up for $2.99 a gallon at the Flying J on South Federal Way in Boise. And if you haven't been able to attend the Winter Wonderland in Caldwell, this is your last week to see those beautiful lights. Check them out, grab some food and drinks, and ice skate at Indian Creek Plaza. The holiday lights only on display until Monday, January 8th. The best parking is along the railroad from 5th Avenue to 12th Avenue. And if you're looking to head up to the mountains, Brundage Mountain Resort announcing the grand opening of the new Centennial Express High Speed Quad. The new chairlift replaces a 32-year-old one installed in 1990 and cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of, top of the mountain from 16 to 6 minutes. A celebration set for Friday at the base of the new lift. Those lining up to be the first to ride the Centennial Express may have free coffee and donuts. It's expected to open around 10 a.m. And looking ahead, the City of Star is still looking for bands and musicians to fill its summer concert series. They're at the Star River House the second and fourth Fridays in July, June, and August. Between four and 500 people attend these events, so if you're interested, call City Offices for more information. Well, here's something to look forward to this year. Hip-hop legend Snoop Dogg said to join NBC Universal's coverage of the 2024 Summer Paris Olympics. Now, Snoop will cover primetime programming on the broadcasting network and streaming hub Peacock. Back in 2021, you'll recall Snoop joined comedian Kevin Hart for commentary back on the Tokyo Olympics. Network executives tapping the legend after his 2021 Olympics commentary had tens of millions of views. Exciting. Mm -hmm. Very exciting stuff. Can't believe it's coming up so quick. I so know. Cool. All right, it's time for our question of the day. 25% of people say they decorate this for the holidays. What is it? That answer, wait a minute, their <laughs> toilet? Their toilet? Do a quarter of people He's really do that? that? No. One. <laughs> I'm going to look this up. All right, our next newscast coming up today at 11. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here then. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.
This is Fox 9 News This Morning. Good morning, it's 7 o'clock. Welcome to Fox 9 News. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. Thank you for joining us on your Wednesday morning. Let's jump right into our news stories this morning. Israel says it's ready for whatever comes next after an explosion in Beirut killed Hamas official Salah al -Ruri. There's concern that Lebanon's Hezbollah could respond, but Israel's top military spokesman says focus remains on Hamas and in particular fighting in Gaza. This after Israel rejected a proposal for a hostage deal that Hamas sent Sunday through Qatari and Egyptian mediators, as was reported by Axios. Arori is the most senior Hamas figure killed since the war in Gaza began. Stay tuned, we will have more on the war in the Middle East coming up in just a bit. Well, South Korea's opposition leader still in the ICU after he was stabbed in the neck. Officials saying this morning that Lee Jae Young's two hour surgery was successful and that he's still recovering in the hospital. The opposition leader was stabbed in the neck back on Tuesday after an attacker approached him while asking for his autograph. The suspect was quickly arrested after that attack. Now, Lee was a candidate for president in South Korea's 2022 presidential election. He lost the race by just 0.7 percentage points. Rescue workers in Japan are still searching for survivors after a powerful earthquake struck the western part of the country. So far, at least 62 people are confirmed dead after the Monday's initial 7.6 magnitude quake. There have been dozens of aftershocks now, including a 4.9 magnitude aftershock early yesterday morning. Experts say those first 72 hours of rescue work is important because the chances of survival, they go down greatly after those first three days. Utah police investigating the death of a man who crawled into a plane engine at the Salt Lake City International Airport. Airport officials saying the man ran onto the secure ramp area at the airport and crawled into a Delta Airlines jet engine that wasn't running. Emergency responders pronouncing him dead at the scene. Police say the man was from Utah and had a boarding pass for a flight to Denver. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board are also investigating. We now know the name of a woman who was killed in a crash New Year's morning. 78-year-old Arlene Parrish of Eagle. A crash at the intersection of North Canada and West Chinden Boulevard around 1.15 a.m. Monday morning killed her. No one else was in her car at the time of the crash. The woman driving the other car survived. Idaho police are still working to gather those details. A new voting law now in effect right here in Idaho as we approach the presidential election. Student identification cards are no longer counted as a form of ID to vote. Now, they have not been able to be used for registering to vote since July. Those fighting the laws say they also make it harder for people without current addresses on their driver's license to register and vote. This includes people in care facilities, people who no longer drive, a lot of our senior citizens, anyone who has moved and people with disabilities. Um, I don't think that was uh, intended. Babe Vote and the League of Women Voters challenging the laws to the Idaho Supreme Court. They're still awaiting the ruling. Both laws remain in effect until otherwise ruled on and we will be sure to keep you updated. The first votes in the presidential election are just two weeks away now as Iowans kick off the 2024 year with their caucuses and a national shift in support among several groups of voters is now causing some serious concern at the White House. Hispanic voters, a critical part of Democrats base, are picking a different path according to recent polls. Biden dominated in the demographic 65 to 32 percent last election, but now trails Trump by five percentage points and dropping support in young and black voters as well. We're proud to see that these great numbers are led by surging support from Hispanic Americans, African Americans, and young people. How about that? Biden beat him by more than 7 million votes last time, and we just have millions of young new voters who've joined the rolls, and they can't stand Donald Trump. Biden will have to hope that voters who currently are supporting a third-party candidate will, in the end, switch back to him. Though the president's low approval rating could also threaten Democrats' control of the Senate. Former President Donald Trump plans to be at a town hall event instead of the next GOP primary debate. The Fox News town hall is set for next week, January 10th. It's the same day and same time that CNN is hosting the Republican primary debate in Iowa. CNN officials say only Trump, Ron DeSantis, and Nikki Haley qualify for this next debate. So far, Trump has skipped every party debate. He has a big lead in the polls over his fellow GOP presidential candidates. 
It comes as Trump and his allies continue to face legal troubles. The former president is appealing a ruling that would keep him off of Maine's 2024 primary ballot over his role in the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. The decision from Maine's Secretary of State citing a section of the 14th Amendment, which says officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding office. Trump's appeal will now go to Maine's Superior Court. He is also expected to appeal a similar ruling by the Colorado Supreme Court. Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows wanting a federal appeals court to reconsider his bid to move the criminal case against him. A federal appeals court ruling last month that Meadows could not have the Georgia election interference case against him moved to federal court. He's accused of trying to overturn the 2020 elections to keep Donald Trump in office. He has pleaded not guilty. If Meadows is able to move his case to federal court, he could potentially argue federal immunity to get the charges dropped. Immigration issues continuing to drive a wedge between Congress and the White House. Authorities at the U.S.-Mexico border encountering a record number of migrants for the month of December. President Biden outside the White House last night telling reporters that the federal government needs more money to address the southern border crisis. Biden's comments come ahead of House Speaker Mike Johnson's visit to the U.S.-Mexico border today as Senate negotiations continue. Lawmakers trying to secure an agreement on a border package tied to additional funding for Ukraine and Israel. And several crossings at the southern border that were shut down due to the record number of migrant crossings set to reopen this week. That's according to senior administration officials. Starting tomorrow, authorities will resume operations at the Lukeville, Arizona border crossing, as well as a crossing in Nogales, Nogales Arizona, that is. The Eagle Pass International Bridge in Texas also reopening, along with a pedestrian crossing at the San Ysidro Port of Entry down in California. Mexican and U.S. officials expected to meet in Washington later this month to continue working together to address migration. And it comes as several Chicago suburbs are taking action to stop those unannounced migrant buses from Texas. At least six communities want to pass rules requiring those bus operators to get approval before unloading people. Last night, four communities passing policies to restrict buses from stopping in their towns. Chicago's mayor says Congress needs to create a comprehensive immigration reform policy. Just last month, the Chicago City Council approved tougher penalty penalties for those bus companies who are dropping off migrants without notice. More than 90 citations have been issued. Two buses were impounded for violations. Back here at home, Idaho Fish and Game will stock roughly 4,000 rainbow trout this month across several different ponds. That includes over 2,600 rainbow trout across Wilson Creek and Wilson Springs in southwest Idaho, 540 in Marsing Pond, and 900 trout in Filer Kids Pond and Filer Pond. And if you're looking to head up to the mountains, Brundage Mountain Resort announcing the grand opening of the new Centennial Express High Speed Quad. The new chairlift replacing a 32-year-old one installed way back in 1990 that cuts and cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to 6 minutes. A celebration is set for this Friday at the base of the new lift. Those lining up to be among the first to ride the Centennial Express may have free coffee and donuts. It's expected to open around 10 a.m. And some more great news for skiers. They're likely going to see some more significant snowfall over the weekend. But as for today here in the Treasure Valley, we'll likely see some cloudy skies. We may see a few eve or afternoon and evening snow flurries around the Treasure Valley. Temperatures going to be right around freezing at 9 a.m. We'll jump into the mid-30s around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 39 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. So some light snow is possible today. And this is kicking off an unsettled pattern that'll stick around through this weekend. Now, another storm is expected to arrive late on Friday and into Saturday morning. Morning. That may bring us some snowfall here in the valley. We'll also see temperatures cooling this weekend. We'll likely see those high temperatures dropping right around freezing on Monday. And let's take a look at radar this morning because we are seeing some snow showers over in eastern Oregon. We are starting to see that snow creep over into the Idaho or into Idaho right now. We are seeing some snow flurries near Parma and near Homedale. Also Ontario seeing a few snow flurries too. But we are looking at little to no accumulation here in the valley through Thursday evening. We'll see about an inch of snow fall over in the Magic Valley. But then as we hit through Friday, 
Friday morning. We are going to see a front rolling in that could bring us some snow showers in the morning here in the valley. We'll see about three inches of snow through Friday morning over in McCall. Now here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains. 31 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches at Brundage, and 17 inches over at Bogus Basin. And then as for your fishing game forecast, that morning peak just passed at around 640 this morning, and our evening peak set to arrive at around 620 this evening. Now as for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 39 degrees in Boise, 38 going to be the high over in Caldwell and Mountain Home, and 37 looking like the high over in Nampa, 40 going to be the high over in Edmonton, Ontario, and moving up to the mountains, 32 going to be the high over in McCall. Temperatures should jump back up into the 40s on both Thursday and Friday, but take a look at this cool down over the weekend. We'll see those high temperatures drop right around average on Saturday, and we'll drop a low average on Sunday. We'll keep on dropping as we head into Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOI bring in yet team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 710 this morning, let's check in on the drive with Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. We have a little bit of extra traffic. It starts about a mile before you get to Meridian Road and continues over to Locust Grove. The merge is still happening off of Meridian Road onto the eastbound lanes. On Chendon eastbound from Middleton Road into downtown Boise, things are looking good. A little bit of extra traffic on Garrity heading up to the freeway from 39th. And same thing is happening on north side. It starts to slow before you get to 6th Street. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your Wednesday morning, be sure to start it with even more team traffic updates. You can find those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Straight ahead on Fox 9 News, fears of an expanded war in the Middle East. The impact after a Hamas leader is assassinated. Plus, a New Year's celebration in the cosmos. A look at this solar flare captured on New Year's Eve. Watching Fox 9 News this morning. It's 7.15 on your Wednesday morning. Welcome back. Israel's war on Hamas is starting to reach beyond its borders. A U.S. official says Israel is behind the assassination of Hamas deputy leader Salah al ruri in Lebanon yesterday. Now his death has extremists in the country calling for revenge. It shows Hamas that the Israelis will target Hamas leaders wherever they are, not just in Gaza, but across the region and indeed across the world. That could spread the conflict north of Israel, just as the situation is heating up to the south. Iran is stationing a naval vessel in the Red Sea after the U.S. sank three Houthi boats there, and it's threatening the vital trade route. Analysts worry if the conflict becomes regional, it could send shipping and oil prices soaring. If oil tankers can't get through the Red Sea, they might have to take longer, more expensive journeys. Meantime, the U.S. is confident Hamas used Gaza's largest hospital as a command center in its war with Israel. That's according to a report from the Associated Press, which cited a declassified intelligence assessment. The assessment says the U.S. has independently corroborated Hamas, used the Al-Shifa hospital complex to house command centers. The U.S. also believes Hamas members evacuated the hospital days before Israel raided the complex in November. Well, hey, take a look at this. 2023 ended with an incredible light show from space. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory capturing the spectacular images of a solar flare on the sun. Now, it happened back on Sunday afternoon. The close-up images of the sun showing a mix of yellow, orange, brown, and black colors. And then that bright white flash appearing on the left side of your photo. You see it there? That's the solar flare. Now, solar flares are a powerful burst of energy. Flares and solar eruptions, well, beautiful. They can actually impact radio communications, electric power grids, navigation, Navigation signals even posing a risk to spacecrafts and astronauts. And hey, take a look at this. NASA sharing this stunning image of from Twitter of the Juno spacecraft of one of Jupiter's many moons. It's the most volcanically active body in our solar system. The last time NASA examined that moon up close was back in 2001. That's when the Galileo spacecraft came within about 112 miles of its south pole. This time, the spacecraft was about 1,000 miles away. Researchers hoping it'll provide more insights into Io's volcanic nature. They'll get another up-close look when Juno flies by again come February. Ooh. How cool is that? It looks like yeah. something out of Star Wars wow. movie. A thousand miles away. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but back here on Earth, we're waking up to some cloudy skies this morning. Mm -hmm. Also, some chilly temperatures, too. Definitely going to want to grab a jacket as you head out the door because much of the Treasure Valley is sitting below freezing right now. Now, we do have a front passing to the south of us right now, but a fringe of that front is impacting eastern Oregon right now, and it may impact us here in the Treasure Valley later on today with a few snow flurries. We shouldn't see any snow accumulation today, but we'll likely see some accumulation this weekend as a series of Pacific storms move into our region, not only bringing us that precipitation, it'll also bring us some chillier air that'll drop our high temperatures right around freezing on Monday. Now, as for today, we're going to see that snow over in eastern Oregon dropping down into the Owyhees as we head throughout the morning. Now, by the afternoon, we may see a few of those snow flurries impact us here in the Treasure Valley. Most of those going to be over in Mountain Home. And then as we head into the evening, we'll see that snow moving over into Twin Falls. They're looking at about an inch and a half of snow through Friday. Now, as for here in the Treasure Valley on Thursday, we'll likely see some clearing in the morning before we start to see some clouds roll in in the afternoon ahead of a front that is going to bring us a rain snow mixture in the morning on Friday. Now let's take a look at the extended forecast because high temperatures should jump back up into the low 40s on both Thursday and Friday before dropping back down into the upper 30s on Saturday. Now with those low temperatures dropping below freezing, we do have a good chance of seeing some snow showers here in the valley on Saturday. We should see those conditions dry out on Sunday and Monday, but high temperatures are going to drop right around freezing on Monday before jumping back up into the upper 30s on Tuesday and they'll likely see a rain snow mixture on Tuesday. Day. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, they'll see a mix of partly to mostly cloudy skies over the next two days with some dry conditions, but then some much needed snow is moving in over the weekend. They'll likely see those high temperatures dropping all the way down to 22 degrees on Monday and take a look at that low on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly four degrees. Those snow showers should continue through Tuesday over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 719 this morning, let's get an update on the drive from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on Garrity. We have some extra traffic that starts at 11th Street and continues on and off all the way up to the freeway. And on the eastbound lanes of the freeway, we have some congested traffic on and off between 10 Mile and Cloverdale Road. Otherwise, the commute is looking pretty darn good. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with even more team traffic updates during your drive. You can get those by turning on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Coming up on Fox 9 News, Americans racking up a record number in credit card debt. The milestone just surpassed. And is bird flu back? The recent discovery in Northern California. Watching Fox 9 News this morning. It's 722. Welcome back. For the first time, the U.S. debt has hit $34 trillion, according to the U.S. Treasury. Looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, it comes as Congress is set to return next week to resume its political fight over federal spending, with funding set to run out in the next few weeks. Supporters of President Biden blame the uptick on tax cuts by previous Republican administrations and point to his plans to reduce the deficit. Credit card debt is exploding, and Americans are feeling the pain. According to a new survey by LendingTree, just half of America's credit card customers feel they can pay off their December balance in full, an all-time low in terms of customer confidence. In November, 58% felt the same. The national credit card balance stands at $1 trillion, and the average in interest rate has reached 21%, the highest point recorded by the Fed in three decades. Goldman Sachs says it's possible inflation could dip below 2% sometime this year. The bank bases that assessment on what it says is a reasonable downward scenario for customer goods. Meantime, the New York Fed has found something similar. Its measure of underlying inflation ticked down to 2.3% in November from a revised 2.4%. This is the Federal Reserve weighs a series of rate cuts, citing what it says is the likelihood of hitting its 2% base rate. Well, an outbreak of avian flu hitting Northern California, and that may mean bad news for chickens and egg prices at grocery stores. Already, an estimated some 3 million birds have now been euthanized. Some neighbors say they're already seeing an impact on store shelves. There's going to be an effect on the market. We're going to see perhaps eggs not available in the market. 
we may see the price of eggs increase. I was shopping yesterday at Lucky's here in Petaluma and they had no eggs, none. Not an egg on the shelf. People own backyard chickens and they can get wiped out even if they only have five chickens. So they've got to be sure when they go into their backyards every morning, they have clean clothes, clean shoes, clean everything. But it's not just California. Right here in Idaho, there were 200 bird flu cases reported up in Lataw County just last month. And you may want to check your refrigerator or your freezer. Nearly 7,000 pounds of Valley Meats Rob or brand Rob ground beef products. They're being recalled over concerns that they could be contaminated with potentially deadly bacteria, E. coli. The U.S. Department of Ag saying third-party lab tests to the meat came back positive, though no one has reported any adverse reactions so far. The products were sent to distributors in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, and Michigan for further distributions in restaurants and other facilities. Well, many Americans now canceling some of their streaming services. Data showing about a quarter of subscribers canceled at least three major streaming services over the past two years. National correspondent Janae Bowens explains the trend. How many streaming services do I have? How many fingers do we have? Seriously, I, we are on Peacock, Hulu, Amazon, Apple TV. Rashonda Pratt is a wife and mom of three who's trying to cut down on streaming services. $15 here, $25 here. But Rashonda is not the only one cutting back. Data from Antenna, a subscription analytics company, estimates an increase in monthly churn, meaning subscription cancellations or lapses. In November 2022, the monthly churn rate was at 5.1%. In November 2023, that number rose to 6.3%. We actually see this cohort of consumers that we've deemed serial churners. Brendan Brady, the media and entertainment lead for Antenna, says the churn rate is complex because many people who leave an app come back. Consumers are no longer forced into loyalty. In the cable world, right, you can't not pay for VH1 in one month but have access to MTV, right? You, that's just not something that was on the table. You sort of had all or, or nothing. But in a streaming world, you can have Netflix one month, Apple TV Plus the next month, and then add Max and then add Peacock on top of that. Rashonda says streaming is convenient, but she's pushing her family members to choose their favorites so they aren't subscribed to too many services. The people that we're buying the streaming product from now have to give us something that's worthy of us streaming. We can expect to see a lot more bundle deals and promotions from streaming services looking to keep and get customers. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. Well, coming up on Fox 9 News, a death at Salt Lake International Airport. We hear from neighbors and experts who try to understand exactly how it happened. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 730 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Delta Airlines officials, they're cooperating with investigators after a man died inside of one of their aircraft engines. 30-year-old Kyler Effinger has been identified as the victim. Ariel Harrison from our Sinclair sister station there. She spoke with passengers and a former airplane mechanic about what happened and what investigators now are discovering. It's a surprise that somebody made it that far. It seems like especially surprising to get on the air side of an airport on your own. Passengers flying into Salt Lake International shocked by the news. A man died after crawling into an airplane engine. Delta says the plane was an Airbus A22-100. Big round, what looks almost like a black hole from here. That's, that's an engine. Mark Light spent more than 15 years as a licensed airplane mechanic. Looking at a photo of a similar A-22, he points out how the engines hang close to the ground. Where it'd be very easy for someone to crawl in there and, and you know, access that if they were just walking away unrestricted. Just like travelers we spoke with, he too was surprised to hear someone gained access to the tarmac and de-icing pad the plane was on. All of the people that are out there, the baggage handlers, the, the ground crew, are fairly well trained on what what they can do, where they can be, where they can't be kind of thing. So it's yes, it's a very regulated, restricted area for even the even the workers. Police report that an alarm triggered when the man entered the tarmac. 
Light says had that not happened to alert authorities, it wouldn't have been long before the plane engines turned on with him inside. The fans spool up, I don't want to say slowly, but there would have been a moment in time when that engine started to spin over if, if he would have been aware of that, but he probably would have been able to get out of there. A man is in custody after police say he stole an airplane and traveled over 100 miles to California with it over the weekend. Police say they were told the suspect took off with the airplane from the North Las Vegas airport back on Saturday. Investigators say that the man landed on a roadway outside a California airport where the local sheriff's office tried to speak with him. The man then tried to run away and is now under arrest. Japanese officials are investigating the fatal plane collision on a runway at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. The accident happened yesterday evening when a Japanese Coast Guard aircraft collided with the passenger plane. The passenger plane was carrying 379 people. All of them were able to get off safely before the plane burst into flames. Five crew members aboard the Coast Guard plane were killed. The pilot was the only survivor. Well, authorities say they're not finding evidence of domestic terrorism in a deadly car crash outside a New Year's concert in Rochester, New York. Police say Michael Avery was driving a rented vehicle full of gas cans when he sped toward pedestrians who were leaving a concert at the Kodak Center, causing the collision that caused an explosion and a large blaze taking crews more than an hour to extinguish. Avery died from his injuries while nine other pedestrians were hurt, including one person with life altering injuries. Two people were killed. Meantime, police identifying those two victims killed in that fiery New Year's Day crash, Justina Hughes and Joshua Orr. Both loved ones of both victims killed in the crash sharing statements, saying in part, quote, we take peace in knowing that Justina and her very best friend Josh spent their last moments together, enjoying their passion and friendship. Turning to developing news, a new voting law is now in effect right here in Idaho as we approach the presidential election. Student identification cards no longer count as a form of ID to vote. They have not been able to be used for registering to vote since July. This is a nationwide effort to make it harder for young people and students to vote. She says the number of 18 and 19 year olds registering to vote between 2018 and 2022 spiking 66% in Idaho and that it's a trend across the country being met with new laws. Babe Vote and the League of Women Voters challenging both of these laws to the Idaho Supreme Court. They're still awaiting the ruling. Both laws in effect until otherwise ruled on. We will keep you updated. The first votes in the presidential election are just two weeks away now as Iowans kicking off the year 2024 with their caucuses and a national shift in support among several groups of voters is causing some serious concern at the White House. Hispanic voters, a critical part of the Democrats base, are picking a different path according to recent polls. Biden dominating in the demographics 65 to 32 percent last election, but now trails Trump by five percentage points and dropping support in young and black voters as well. We're proud to see that these great numbers are led by surging support from Hispanic Americans, African Americans, and young people. How about that? Biden beat him by more than 7 million votes last time, and we just have millions of young new voters who've joined the rolls, and they can't stand Donald Trump. Biden will have to hope that voters who currently support a third-party candidate will in the end switch back to him, though the president's low approval rating could also threaten Democrats' control of the Senate. Former President Donald Trump plans to be at a town hall event instead of the next GOP primary debate. The Fox News town hall is set for next week on January 10th. It's the same day and same time that CNN is hosting the Republican primary debate in Iowa. CNN officials say only Trump, Ron DeSantis, and Nikki Haley qualify for this next debate. So far, Trump has skipped every party debate. He has a big lead in the polls over his fellow GOP presidential candidates. It comes as Trump and his allies continue to face legal troubles. The former president is appealing a ruling that would keep him off of Maine's 2024 primary ballot over his role in the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. The decision from Maine's Secretary of State citing a section of the 14th Amendment which also says officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding office. Trump's appeal will now go to Maine Superior Court. He's also expected to appeal a similar ruling by the Colorado Supreme Court. Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows wants a federal appeals court to reconsider his bid to move the criminal case against him. 
A federal appeals court ruled last month that Meadows could not have the Georgia election interference case against him moved to federal court. He's accused of trying to overturn the 2020 elections to keep Donald Trump in office. He has pleaded not guilty. If Meadows is able to move his case to federal court, he could potentially argue federal immunity to get the charges dropped. Well, immigration issues continuing to drive a wedge between Congress and the White House. Authorities at the U.S.-Mexico border encountering a record number of migrants for the month of December. President Biden outside the White House last night telling reporters that the federal government needs more money to address the southern border crisis. Biden's comments coming ahead of House Speaker Mike Johnson's visit to the U.S.-Mexico border today and as Senate negotiations continue, lawmakers trying to secure an agreement on a border package that's still tied to additional funding for both Ukraine and Israel. Well, meantime, several crossings down at the southern border that were shut down as officials handled that surge of migrants set to reopen this week. That's according to senior administration officials. Starting tomorrow, authorities will resume operations at the Lukeville, Arizona border crossing, as well as a crossing in Nog Nogales, Arizona. The Eagle Pass International Bridge in Texas will also be reopening with a pedestrian bridge crossing at the San Ysidro Port of Entry in California. Mexico and U.S. officials expected to meet in Washington later on this month to continue working together to address migration. And it comes as several Chicago suburbs are taking action to stop unannounced migrant buses from Texas. At least six communities want to pass rules requiring those bus operators get approval before unloading tens of thousands of people. Last night, four communities passing policies to restrict buses from stopping in their towns. Chicago's mayor saying Congress needs to create a comprehensive immigration reform policy. Just last month, the Chicago City Council approved tougher penalties for those bus companies dropping off migrants. Without notice, more than 90 citations have been issued. Two buses were impounded for violations. Back here at home, Idaho Fish and Game will stock roughly 4,000 rainbow trout this month across several ponds. That includes over 2,600 rainbow trout across Wilson Creek and Wilson Springs in southwest Idaho, 540 in Marsing Pond, and 900 trout in Filer Kids Pond and Filer Pond. Well, it's set to be a cloudy day here in the Treasure Valley. Temperatures as you head out the door are going to be quite chilly too. We'll be right around freezing at 9 a.m. Jumping into the mid-30s around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 39 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. Now we are going to see some light snow possibly later today over in Mountain Home and possibly around the Treasure Valley too. That's the fringe of a front that is passing to the south of us later on today. And another storm is set to arrive on Friday. That'll bring us a rain-snow mixture. And this is the beginning of the unsettled pattern that is set to stay unsettled settled through early next week. Now we'll also see some cooling thanks to these fronts. Temperatures are set to drop right around freezing as we head into Monday next week. And taking a look at those snow flurries coming down over in eastern Oregon right now. We're starting to see those cross the border. We're seeing a few snow flurries out near New Plymouth right now, also near Parma and near Homedale this morning. Those will likely continue over the next couple of hours, but we're going to see little to no snow accumulation around the Treasure Valley through Thursday afternoon. But then as we hit through Friday, the first of a period of fronts are expected to move through our region. That'll bring us up to an inch of snow here in Boise, and we'll see about three inches of snow through Friday morning over in McCall. Now, speaking of snow, here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains, 31 inches over at Tamarack, 15 inches over at Brundage, and 17 inches the base depth over at Bogus Basin. Then as for your fishing game forecast, that morning peak passed at around 640 this morning. Our evening peak set to arrive at around 620 tonight. Now, as for high temperatures today, we'll see a high 39 degrees in Boise, 38 going to be the high over in Caldwell and over in Mountain Home. 37 going to be the high over in Nampa. 40 going to be the high over in Emmett in Ontario today. And then moving up to the mountains, 38 going to be the high in Idaho City. 37 looking like the high in Sun Valley. And 32 going to be the high in McCall. Temperatures should jump back up into the low 40s on both Thursday and Friday before we see that weekend cool down. Temperatures should drop back down into the upper 30s on Saturday and will drop below average on Sunday. Those temperatures are going to keep on dropping as we head into Monday next week. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 741 this morning, let's get an update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. Heavy traffic around the 10-mile road interchange and also around the Meridian Road interchange and the Eagle Road interchange. So we've got some heavy traffic between 10 Mile and Cloverdale on the eastbound lanes. Garrity is very busy from 
Kings Road up to Stam Lane. And Chendon is still looking good eastbound between Middleton Road and downtown Boise. From the News Talk KVOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your Wednesday morning, start it off with some team traffic updates. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Well, coming up on Fox 9 News, finding solace through sound. The new therapy that's helping many while making waves. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 746. Welcome back. A new study suggests future COVID vaccines should be inhaled rather than injected through shots. Scientists in Boston studied immune responses when a vaccine was given through a device similar to an asthma inhaler. A senior author on the research says research says this method helps to better build up immune cells in the nose and lungs. That's compared to current shots, which mostly raise antibodies in the blood. The research was published in the journal Nature. Well, it's not the usual way most of us try to improve our health, but an ancient trend in medicine is growing in modern day popularity. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shows us the art of sound healing. So this is one example of sound healing. What started in areas such as Egypt, China, and India, now richly growing in the U.S. under the names of sound medicine, meditation, sound baths, and sound therapy. Come in right here, and I'm going to have you lay down. For those such as Hannah Chapman, it's time out to meet her own health goals this new year. My goal for the new year in 2024 is to be really present with myself and with the people around me. And what better way to do this, she says, than to let the vibrations of the sound performed by Crystal Bowl practitioner Michelle Luck, she hears, resonate in her body. And I find that the more I'm able to have that sense of presence, the more I'm able to, um, you know, know what it is that I need innately. In addition to helping you focus within, however, a recent study by the National Institutes of Health, which looked at the brain waves of those who undergo sound healing techniques, found depending on the frequency emitted from the sound bowls, people experienced reductions in tension, anxiety, depressed mood, and physical pain. They also had a variety of energy levels rise and fall and different levels of relaxation. So you can sort of just feel why when you listen, can't you? Most sessions at Ohio's Market at B, where Luck has her practice, started about $50 a session. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus reporting. Well, hey, if your New Year's resolution includes exercising more, eating healthier, or improving your mental health, you may be able to find that motivation to stick with your goals from a four-legged friend. Now, pets can keep you motivated to move, whether that's taking your dog or a cat for a walk outside, we don't judge, or just playing in the backyard. Staying active can benefit you both. There's a variety of ways that, that pets can play a role in helping people through the holidays, throughout the year. And get this, animals also boost your mental health and allow for social connection, not only with your pet, but the others you meet when you're out and about. And if your resolution is to eat healthier, there may be foods which, that are good for both you and your pet. Just make sure to research which fruits, veggies, and proteins are safe. Oh, those were some cute pups. They bring a smile yeah. to my face in the morning every time I see a dog. No, I love it. Especially if you are heading out for maybe a walk this morning. What, what are we looking at? Yeah. Well, you're looking at some chilly conditions yep. this morning. Also some cloudy skies around the Treasure Valley. Temperatures sitting below freezing right now. And we do have a front passing to the south of us over northern Nevada. Now the fr uh, fringe piece of that front is set to pass through the Treasure Valley right now. It's passed through eastern Oregon this morning. It'll likely just bring a few snow flurries to our region. Then after that, we're going to see multiple Pacific storms move into our region. 
region over the weekend, possibly bringing us some snow showers here in the valley. We also are going to see some chillier temperatures moving in too. Now let's take a look at future cast. We are going to see those showers moving into the Owyhees later on this afternoon, and a few of those snow flurries could impact us here in the Treasure Valley later on in the afternoon. Then as we hit into the evening, we may see a few snow flurries out near Mountain Home before those move over to Twin Falls, where we are looking at about an inch and a half of snow through Thursday afternoon over in the Magic Valley. Now as for here in the Treasure Valley, we'll likely see some mostly clear conditions tomorrow morning before we see those clouds rolling into the afternoon. Then as we hit into Friday morning, we are going to see the first of those fronts arriving, likely bringing us a wintry mix of rain and snow here in the valley. Now let's move to the extended forecast. High temperatures on both Thursday and Friday are going to be in the low 40s. We'll likely see a wintry mix of rain and snow on Friday before we see some snow showers on Saturday as those high or those low temperatures drop below freezing. Now high temperatures are going to drop down into the mid 30s on Sunday and will drop right around freezing on Monday. But then temperatures should start to trend upwards as we head into Tuesday. We'll see a high of 38 degrees on Tuesday with another rain snow mixture expected. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll see dry conditions both today and tomorrow, followed by snow showers on Friday and that with those much needed snow showers will stick around through Tuesday over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasili. CBS 2 and Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in with Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the connector into downtown Boise. Starting to see some slow traffic as you approach the River Street exit, and that continues on the connector into downtown Boise. Then on the eastbound lanes of the freeway, really heavy traffic around 10 Mile, even heavier traffic around Meridian Road. Those are heavy merges this morning. And then congested traffic till you're past Cloverdale, all on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with even more team traffic updates. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Coming up on Fox 9 News, a busy weekend for the roads and the skies. The new numbers that show just how busy this holiday weekend was. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 754. Welcome back. It was a busy holiday weekend at U.S. airports. According to the Transportation Security Administration, more than 2.6 million people went through TSA security checkpoints nationwide the Friday before New Year's Eve. That number was 2.5 million on Saturday and 2.1 million on Sunday. TSA Administrator David Pekoski notes the agency is expecting to screen a high number of passengers this week as well, as people are now returning home from their holiday travels. Demand for gasoline in the U.S. plummeted by double digits in the last week. According to gas price forecaster Patrick DeHaan's Gas Buddy data, U.S. gasoline demand fell 12% last week during the holidays. Last year, during the same week, the U.S. saw demand fall 13.7%. After rising last week, the nation's average price of gas fell nearly two cents from a week ago to $3.06 per gallon on Monday. If you're looking to fill up this morning, let's take a quick look at gas prices in our state. Expect to pay around $3.17 a gallon across Idaho this morning. It's a bit higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up is going to be Costco. It's under the $3 a gallon mark there this morning. If you don't have a membership, not to worry. You can also fill up for $2.99 a gallon at the Flying J on South Federal Way in Boise. And if you haven't been able to attend the Winter Wonderland in Caldwell, it's your last week to see the lights. Check them out, grab food and drinks, and ice skate at Indian Creek Plaza. Holiday lights are on display until Monday, January 8th. The best parking is along the railroad from 5th Avenue to 12th Avenue. And if you are looking to head up to the mountains, Brundage Mountain Resort announcing the grand opening of the new Centennial Express High Speed Quad. The new chairlift replaces a 32-year-old one installed in 1990 and cuts the ride time from the base area to the top of the mountain from 16 to 6 minutes. A celebration set for this Friday at the base of the new lift. Those lining up to be among the first to ride the Centennial Express may have free coffee and donuts. It's expected to open around 10 a.m. 
Well, hey, here's something to look forward to this year. Hip hop legend Snoop Dogg set to join NBC Universal's coverage of the 2024 Summer Paris Olympics. Snoop will cover primetime programming on the broadcast network and stream on the Hub Peacock. In 2021, you'll recall Snoop joined comedian Kevin Hart for commentary back on the Tokyo Olympics. Network executives tapping the legend after that commentary had tens of millions of views. Oh, and it was hilarious, too. Can't yeah. wait for this year's. Right. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to it. So excited. Well, thank you for watching Fox 9 News. We'll see you tomorrow bright and early at 7 a.m. And be sure to bundle up today. Have a great day.